Christian, Lauren, and Jake live with you here on the radio. Hope you guys are uh, having a great day. Live online at Q92radio.com. And now live on Facebook, YouTube, and X. Q92 Radio on Facebook, Q92 on YouTube, and at Q92 on X. Where you can watch the show from now until 7 o'clock. And a big thank you, as always, to Sarda, the uh, stream sponsor, the video stream sponsor for the 7 o'clock hour of the show. Appreciate them being a part of this. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, Jake with us, but uh, producing from home, his home studio today, as he is uh, battling a little bit of the, uh, the head cold, cold, cold the head cold stuff like that. So, yeah, to not contaminate us, he's giving us the respect we didn't give him, and he's uh, and now he's paying now for he's the- paying for it. <laughs> so uh, he is uh, he is staying home today. Jake, feeling better? Yeah, I feel yeah. a lot better today. Are you? Yeah, that's good. That's good. I appreciate you still getting up and doing the show from home yeah looks like a yeah. nice very like earthy tone little home studio you got there yeah i'm in my basement it's a mess but it looks kind of cool actually yeah to me it looks cool so uh still here the video still going here but uh jake like i said doing things from home today now what do we got for you on the show here this morning seven o'clock hour as we celebrate saver stark restaurant month through the 30th we're giving away a 25 dollar gift card to cosmos grill in Maslin, so you can go check that out and get some great food. Now, if you want to take part in Saver Stark Restaurant Month, go to visitcanton.com backslash excuse me, Saver Stark for a free digital pass to redeem special offers and get entered to win over $600 in gift cards from local restaurants. That, that could feed you a couple of times. Yeah, that'd be cool. Got that for you. For all the Fallout Boy finalists, we're going to be calling the grand prize winner this morning in the 8 o'clock hour. We'll be talking to you and the 9 o'clock hour. Uh, we're going to be joined on the show. The World Series of Comedy is happening right now, start of the 20th, at Crackpots Comedy Club in Maslin. Over 40 comedians competing all over North America for a place in the finals in Las Vegas in September. And the cool thing about this is Crackpots Comedy Club in Maslin is one of the clubs where comedians are traveling to compete. And on the show today, going to be here in studio around 9.15 uh, this morning. Joining us is going to be Joe Lowry. He's the founder of the World Series of Comedy. And Derek Luna, he'll be the MC of the World Series of Comedy. So they're going to be joining us, talk about how this came to be, what, what people can expect. That Some of you might have already gone to check it out yesterday when it kicked off, but it's going on uh, tonight, tomorrow, Saturday. And after we talk to them, We'll be giving away a four-pack of tickets to Saturday, March 23rd at 9.15 to a night of comedy at Crackpots there as we talk to them every Thursday at the 9 o'clock hour. So we got a little bit of everything for you here this morning. Our phone number is 330-450-9292. Our text line, 330-269-9292. It's Dua Lipa Houdini, Q92. to the ID channel every night. Uh, at home, I have a fan on in pitch black, but if I go anywhere and stay at a hotel or a friend's house, I go to YouTube, put on white noise, or go to Spotify and put on an airplane sound. They have apps, too. Like, I have one that sounds like a fan on my... You have that one Calm? The app Calm. Oh, yeah, I have that. Well, for a while, I had a paid subscription. Pay? You, get to pay. It, uh, you get some things free. It's better to pay, though. I fall asleep to the sweet sounds of Judge Judy, someone says there on the you go. test live. Justice. Uh, see on YouTube, I just, uh, I, fi- I now fall asleep to Bluey well, because of my two-year-old. Yeah. That's fair. I use the small air filter system in my room. Does that make enough noise to fall asleep? I mean, it really just has to be that low, um, something. Yeah, no, like I said, me, give me a war movie. And me, cops. And I'm going to be good to go. Uh, what is it? Rage Room, families that play favoritism, but then call the kettle black for other family members when they believe that they are also doing it for their own kids. <laughs> Family favoritism. Sucks. I yeah. feel bad for my brother and sister. 
<laughs> you're on a roll today. You I know really your sister's do. listening. I really do. They know I'm the best one. <laughs> if there's one shining star of the children, they, they know who it was. They know it wasn't them. Uh, to the guy that passed me as soon as the railroad crossing bar goes up, how can you assume I'm not also late for work and in a hurry, asshat? <laughs> Listen, I'm for name calling as long as I can say it on the radio. I wish I could be like, you know how they do the NFL mic up? I am like the worst. I have I need one of those for on days when I'm running late or someone's driving stupid, like close to me. My kids make fun of me all the time. That does not get used enough. Your sister said I need to take your booze away. <laughs> booze. The Zoa. Uh Rage Room, this country not having a law for maternity leave and having to go back to work. Too soon because you can't afford not to. Give it the times, USA. Rage room. Yeah, I mean, you better sad. Yeah, I know. I mean, who? It's the hardest thing to go back to work and leave your baby the first time. It's not Especially easy. Especially when you're not ready yet. You know what I mean? Like when you're not physically healed completely, or you know, just. I mean, you're like lactating, and I only say that because it's a thing. Like even if you're not breastfeeding, like you leak for a while. Yeah, well, the older you get, yeah. We're like, we're like old faucets when we get older, you know what I mean? I'm talking about new moms. I know. I'm talking about wieners. You know, there's that old saying, you can wiggle, you can jiggle, you can do a little dance. The last three drops end up in your pants. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> you ever hear that, Jake? Only from you. Oh, well, there you go, dude. But you have said it before. Well, take it with you and use it in, in, in life. Oh, I have already. Have you done it? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I repeat it to other people, and then and everybody else is, knows what I'm talking about. Nice. Like, well, because they've already all heard it. They're like, no. yeah. Oh, they haven't? They, they haven't heard it. Oh. I see. I've heard it. Just trying to make the world a better place. Yeah. You ever been put in the friend zone, Jake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots of times. I'm quite familiar with when, that. When did you find out you were in the friend zone? Pretty much right away. Right away? How, what's a key to you? How do you know? Uh, I don't know. They don't show interest. They <laughs> don't want anything to do with you. Or they might be in a relationship already. That, well, the, well yeah, that, yeah. That, see, I don't consider that friend zone. No, I just yeah, consider that like yeah, right. she's dating someone. Yeah. But it, it's been there. I saw an article on uh, eight reasons why girls friend zone guy. And we all know, guys, friend zone is a terrible place to be. If you like a girl. It's, right. it's a t- I like you. You're a buddy. Oh. Hmm. Oh. I mean, in your head, you just hear. No! No! Oh, you said buddy? Did you call me buddy? Oh, son of a bee stick. It, we've oh. all been there. Well, maybe some of you have. A lot of you have realized, you know, oh no, oh no, I'm I'm the friend. I think a good a good uh, a good sign is when she's telling you about other boys. She likes. yeah, that's 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 you need to realize. That oh, yeah. I'm the guy you talk to about the guys. Oh damn. Yeah. Oh no. I I found an article of eight reasons why girls friend zone guys. Listen, I always say too, you're entitled. Just because someone likes you doesn't mean you have to like them back. Right. I've never felt that way. I, I don't think it's rude. If I'm like, I like you, I don't like you that way. It's embarrassing. Yeah. It sucks. But a lot of times, us guys. Lower 20s. I am Art J. Weather from New. Q92. Well, we are going to see some sunshine through your Thursday. Problem is, it's going to feel like winter. 37 degrees for the high. Grab a warm coat. Overnight up, partly cloudy sky. Colder still, a low near 23. I am Mark J. Weather from News 5.
summer promotions, things like that. Probably did. You think you ever had a teacher that just didn't like you? I can't imagine. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if Mr. Belts didn't like me, but he certainly had no problem mispronouncing my name. He might not have liked me. He might have just thought, you know what? I don't like this kid. I'm trying to think. Jake, is there a teacher you think maybe didn't yes. like you? <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> Why don't you think they liked Was there you? more than one? <laughs> no, it was a history teacher, uh, okay. and he liked all the sports people because he was a bas or a baseball coach. Gotcha. Uh, and he did not like me, and he was because he would always like check our homework, but he would always like just like go over and glance to make sure you did it. Yeah. But every time he got to me, he would pick it up and thoroughly examine it to make sure that I did it. But everybody else was like, "Oh yeah, you're good, John. You know, Mark, you're good. Jake, let me see that." And he would like pick it up and like examine it. And he made me redo things several times. And I well, are you, are I, you saying the athletes got to do whatever they wanted? No, they didn't get to do whatever they wanted, but, but they certainly had it easier. We'll get caught up on what the the Hoff is. Days in music, it is Q92. Christian Lord, Jake here with you on your radio, streaming at Q92radio.com. And of course, live on Facebook, YouTube, and X. Anyway, you're checking out the show this morning. Thank you. We appreciate it. Glad you're with us. Again, a gift card, $25 gift card to Cosmos Grill Mass. We're giving away here later on this hour to celebrate Saber Stark's restaurant months happening now through the 30th. Is your bracket ready, everybody? Ready for March Madness? This next two days, a lot of your uh, companies are going to be a lot less productive. <laughs> around. Not if now. you see employees on yeah. their phones a lot more, yeah. that's why. Not now. In about in a few hours, around noon, uh, you're going to notice... Uh, a lot of your employees all of a sudden are, uh, are not as uh, not as busy as they were. Yeah. And as it ticks on, you might see some people ask for some PTO time. Might. They might, so might want to watch it live. I know people that take these days off. Yeah. For the first two days when it's like games from noon to like one in the morning. Right. So. Literally nonstop. Again, good luck to the Akron Zips. Yes. Playing at 130 today against Creighton, the three seed. It's going to be a real tough one. How is on Akron? True TV. How is Akron seeded where they are? They're like. 14. Yeah. I feel like that. I don't know. I feel like they should be seated a little higher than that. No? They're where they should be. Okay. They're a max school. All right. Not a power conference, not a big All time right. school. But awesome that they won the tournament. Yes. Awesome that they got to go to the dance. And there's upsets every year. Who knows? You know, it's a tough draw to get to number three, Creighton. That's a tough draw. But, again, that's 1.30 on True TV, where you normally watch Impractical Jokers all day. By the way, Impractical Jokers fans, you're going to be a little upset the next few days. You're not going to see as much of the guys on TV. No. They show that show in a loop. Yeah, and they've got now they've got programming, live programming. Yeah, so... Just letting you guys know, because I listen. I watch it when there's nothing on. I put on Impractical Jokers and laugh. But um, next four days, you might find it a little hard to find Practical Jokers because TBS, TNT, True TV, CBS, uh, Paramount Plus, those are the ones that are going to have all the March Madness coverage. Yeah. So, good luck to all the teams, but go Zips. Who knows? Who knows? Probably got some Zips alumni listening right now. Oh, for sure. In their route for the Akron Zips here today. Uh, let me see. Happy Thursday. Truck driver Luke checking in. Have a good day. Have a good day, truck driver Luke. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, payroll girl. Uh, good morning, everybody. Lumber guy checking in. Lumber guy, good to hear from you. Glad everyone is checking in. Everyone. What is something you hate about going to a wedding? There's a few things I hate. I found a list of 10 things. A list, not a less. Uh, 10 things all wedding guests hate. And I agree with some of them. Um, I think probably the biggest thing is the wait between the wedding and the reception. On the list. Is it? It's yeah, that lag is awful. On the list. I don't care if you have a cocktail hour. You guys are never on time. It ends up becoming like a cocktail couple hours. I've, you know? I've been to almost all my friends' weddings. Well, they're my friends, so I would be there. Best man in a few. Mm -hmm. um, I'll never forget my friend Muckle. He doesn't live around here no more. I think he's up in Cleveland somewhere. Um, but he got married. We literally went from the church, walked down a hallway, reception. I love it. Reception. I was like, this is awesome. Food was ready. Yeah. You walked right down. You didn't have to do a line. They came to every table. They said, go sit down, relax, have a drink, get some food. And they came to your table. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for it. And I thought it was, well, it was, I thought it was like, this is, this is how you do it. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean nothing wrong. I'm, we've all done. My family members have done the whole, like, reception a couple hours later but i agree with you i hate 
I, that's the one thing that to me, that's the biggest bugaboo. We went to a wedding, I don't know, within the last year and a half. And it was kind of the same thing. They actually got married and had the reception in the same oh, room. Beautiful. And where they got married was like one end of the room and they just did a reset. They moved out everything and made it the dance floor mm-hmm. and the caterer set up down there. Nice. So it was like you stayed at the tables that you sat at for the wedding. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like they walked down an aisle down the middle of the tables. It was perfect. I like it. I got to say, like it didn't take them long to switch that out. Did the bridal party leave the room for some pictures? Absolutely. Did but they everyone have, got to go sit down, have everybody, a drink. Yeah, the bar was open. They had, they um, on the other end of the room where the tables were, they had set up some light apps. So you could snack a little bit until dinner service. It was perfect. Gotcha. Question for you guys. And then we got sports coming up here in a couple minutes. And we'll get back in this and I'll go through this list. What are you, as a wedding guest, not in the what you're a guest, what is something you hate about weddings as a guest? 330-450-9292. That's the phone number, the text line, 330-269-9292. You can also comment on Facebook, YouTube, and X. Leave it in the comments, and I will go over the list, and we'll go through your answers as well. But again, as a wedding guest, what is something you hate? about a wedding. It's Capital City, safe and sound on Q92. Do women want gentlemen? Or uh, don't you still want the bad boys? I mean, I, Do you I don't know about a bad man? boy, but you don't want a pushover either. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I would really like you girls just to do that. Text your man that and then text back whatever the hell. Uh, they write back. I'm just curious. Or just tell us what he what he wrote back. I'm very curious. I mean, I guess that would be a that would be a good compliment to get, I suppose. Should I add a heart emoji? No, don't overdo it. No, okay. Don't overdo it. If he's listening, this isn't going to work. He's not listening. Jake, do you ever play golf? One time in my whole life. Enjoy it. Like not mini golf, like golf, golf, golf. golf. Okay. Yeah, it was. It wasn't the best time. I would go again just to drive the golf cart around. But isn't that the best? Yeah. What about darts? We'll play darts. Uh, we used to it in the basement when we were kids, but I haven't played darts in a minute. Okay. Okay. Did you play any sports in high school? Uh, I ran cross country fresh or eighth grade in the freshman year, and then I quit. Why'd you quit? And I just didn't like running, and I also didn't like the booty <laughs> shorts and the, the booty eight, shorts. eighteen people showering at the same time in camp. It just it was a. <laughs> It was a very uh, Jake's like I'm out. The hell camp this were you way at? Too much. That's what Jake, what camp were you at? That's what happens at the Jack- Jackson Cross Country Camp. Ask anybody. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I, I, wait, <laughs> wait. Booty shorts and showers. Booty shorts and showers. group showers. <laughs> why I mean, I we had that for football. The only time I ever. But that was after we played a football game. Everybody was dirty, muddy. They didn't have like individual like showers wait you guys all went in one big shower room yeah naked no in scuba gear yeah yes <laughs> yes naked it was a shower do you have that weird kid that had wandering eyes no i got kicked out <laughs> <laughs> uh, text message sounds like fun jake <laughs> Wait a minute now. I, 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 apparently, I'm in the same club as Jake, but I didn't wouldn't think cross country. I know. Well, it's like a competition. They want to see how many people well, can fit in the same shower together. Okay, we're done. Wait, what, what, <laughs> we're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> Forecast for Mark Johnson coming up on Q92. Do you know what my biggest problem is about driving? in mornings like this is the visibility. Me, I told you that was my that was my bugaboo. Like I keep seeing on uh I don't know if it's social media, but it was like what it looks like when regular people drive. What it looks like to those people with astigmatism because I have one of those. It's true. It's scary. Cuz you get those big like halos and like Oh yeah, no. So I, you I, people I, with those blue burn your retinas out street legal headlights, I don't like you very much today. I sometimes pretend I'm time, I'm traveling through space when I'm in the snow. Oh, I feel it like does I'm in, look like, like that. I'm in Star Wars. Like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in hyperdrive. Especially when you put your brights on. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I do. I feel like I'm like Han Solo. Like, oh, you're watching the road, you too. catch me, Darth Vader. This is a Q92 Sports Break with Christian Bigglesworth on Q92. 
The Cleveland Cavaliers lost to the Heat last night, 107-104. They fall to 43-26 and on the season. They're off today before they play the Timberwolves tomorrow night at 8 p.m. That game is on NBA TV. The Guardians are back in action in spring training baseball today as they'll play the Kansas City Royals at 4 p.m. The Guardians 10-13 and in spring training. March Madness begins today at noon. Get your brackets ready and good luck to the Akron Zips. We'll be taking on Creighton today at 1.30 in round one. You can watch the Zips on True TV. And finally yesterday, the Cleveland Browns signed former Bears running back Dante Foreman to a one-year contract. That's a look at sports right here on today's Hit Music, Q92. We'll get caught up on what the, the Hoff is up to. And then after that, oh, oh, Jake, huh. go to the front door. What? Oh, didn't even didn't even ask. What if I got something to his death? I know. That's like a ninja <laughs> Go to the front door. door. There's poison. <laughs> no, our friends at Covered Perfections just dropped off something. Oh, that's so nice. Check the front door for snacks from Covered. I just wanted us to get this for anybody else. Oh, I'm so sorry that, you know, our lobby's closed until 9. Yeah. Well, 9.15, basically. But thank you so much. We appreciate that. Yes. We can't wait to uh. Oh, my gosh. Indulge. All right. He's bringing these huge boxes of stuff I back. Love it. Well, Dang it. Thank God he's safe. Oh, he didn't even question me. No, he was like, bye. He, was like, he actually right, slammed leaving. his headphones down. He's like, bye. He's like, Jake, punch yourself. Oh, all right. Oh, my goodness. Look uh, at this. Sports coming up right after Wiz Khalifa roll up on Q92. Statements have not been evaluated by the continued disease. I mean, you could. Ninety two radio.com and you can watch the show on Facebook, YouTube, and X. Seven thirty three right here on today's hit music. It is Q ninety two. Still to come this hour. We're gonna be helping you guys celebrate Saber Stark Restaurant Month. It's going on now through the thirtieth by giving away a twenty five dollar gift card to Cosmos Grill and Maslin. When you hear the cue to call, be caller number ten and we will hook you up with that gift card. Eight o'clock hour talking to the grand prize winner. Of Fallout Boy, the exclusive VIP access. Fighting off burps at the Schottenstein Center in Columbus. Must be the Celsius. I don't know. Is it carbonated? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. It is. All these things it says it does, I don't believe any of them. It says essential energy. I just do that because I don't drink coffee. Right. Accelerates metabolism. I doubt that. Burns body fat. I doubt that. I don't think everyone's like, I lost 30 pounds on a, on Celsius. No, I don't think so. But if it doesn't at all, I guess you could make the statement. Even I suppose. If, even, even if, if one minute, person, yeah. right. If, if it'll be like, listen, you'll burn a calorie. Helps hey. Fat, helps fat loss. <laughs> not wrong. We're not lying. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess you're not, though. So. All right, I'll ask you guys uh, again. As a guest, what do you hate about weddings? I see some of your answers, but first, let me give you this list. So we came across this morning. Ten things wedding guests hate. Play along and tell me if you agree or disagree. Having to pay for your drinks. I see that one. 
No, it doesn't bother that me. It doesn't bother me. No. I've been to uh, too many weddings where both. It's a paid for bar and you got to I pay. mean, when you go to an open bar reception situation, it's like, this is amazing. Yeah. But I also get that they're like starting their life together. Yeah. So I've had people do like certain beers and like a red or a white wine is covered. But if you want a mixed drink, then you pay for I've been to that. Too. That. Yeah. And I understand not everybody has the unlimited budget to of pay course. for bottles of wine, liquor, yeah. beer. I, I, I'm, I'm totally good with that. Never been offended by that. Nope. Uh, number two, reception that takes place hours after the ceremony. It does suck. Like in the summer, you're all dressed up. It's hot, and muggy, and you're in all these like a suit and a big dress. And you got like just enough time to not go home. So you go to a restaurant all dressed up. I know. Eat something and drink to go back and eat. And, and, <laughs> and drink, drink something. Because no. you're like, where do we go? You go home for, what, an hour, two hours? So you, so you and maybe some other people th- that you know that are there, you go off and get a beer somewhere or whatever, but you're dressed. I don't know. I just, it My does. sister did it. I remember that. Like, she got married up here, like, in North. No, Yeah, it was in North Canton. And then we had to drive down to, like, it was, like, East Sparta. Or, I mean, like, it, w- it was ridiculous. So by the time the wedding was over, they got their pictures, then had to drive down the, you know what I mean? Like they got there and everybody was like, "Let's go!" No, it wasn't East Party. It, well, it was East. It, it was uh, Zor Tavern is where she had her Zor. Yeah, love, love Zor. Actually, never been there. I just love saying. Um, oh. Number three. Oh, can I attest to this? Too many long speeches. I've said I was at a wedding. I said this, I think, before. A dear friend of mine, he got married. Uh, his wife's a wonderful lady. Now they're no longer married. It's okay, life happens. I think they're very cordial for the kids. I don't think it was a very amicable divorce. But she ran it. She was a teacher to dance student. And when I tell you, there was like 10 speeches at this GD wedding. <laughs> I honestly got pissed at some point because all these like little girls started coming up and crying and giving these speeches about how they love her and they were so happy. And I'm like, this is open mic night. What are we doing here? <laughs> you should have stood up and been like, can yeah. I go? I have a speech. Let's end the speeches. I'm <laughs> hungry. Where's the cavatelli? I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, I'm telling you it was speech after speech after speech. Every time I thought it was over, another person went up and grabbed the mic. And I'm like, what are we doing? Do you have like a signal? Like when you go places with Jamie and things go on and on and on. Do you have like that signal? I usually get a kick under the table, actually. The what? You're annoyed like, or like, oh my gosh! Like you're trying to commiserate. We haven't reached that yet, but uh, I think she could tell because uh, when I don't want to be somewhere, I have zero poker face. I have a look that says I don't want to be. Uh, I feel like I, I, I feel like I'm very good at conveying uh, how I feel without saying a word. Whether I'm in a good mood, a bad that's mood, fair. poopy mood, annoyed mood, I feel like you can look at me like. You don't want to be here. No, I would agree because sometimes even I can tell. Yeah. What your deal is? Yeah, I'm not. I, I, I there's no poker face. I'm, I'm not good at it. A lot of people are great at it. They can yeah. be so mad at you and you'd never know. They can be so annoyed you'd never know. Some me, I'm just like, yeah. I'm not going to yell or have a fit. Right. But you'll be able to look at me and be like, something's up. See, we've been to weddings where the wedding portion has gone so long, and that's where I get the either a hand squeeze, a leg squeeze, or a kick. Like from Tony, he'll be like, Oh my god. Well, if I was with Jamie then. I would have, if there was a kicking thing, I'd have kicked her as hard as I could. Like the ninth <laughs> speech. Nice. Uh, sitting in undesirable locations. I've been, I've been the, I've been the guest that was put at the way back by the kitchen table. Oh yeah. Way back. Uh-huh. All the way, the farthest table back. Yeah. I've been at a wedding where I was that guy. I think we have too. I was put there. Yeah. Uh, being forced to participate. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but like at Go a wedding up, house. Try to catch the garter. No. Oh, yeah. When they call you out. Get in the conga line. Yeah, no. That's one thing as a DJ. Don't don't single people out. Like, get up here. You look like you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that isn't. Oh, the single man. Get up there. You going, Christian? I'm not. What would do? Are you coming? No. <laughs> Sitting right here. Oh, man. Uh, couples who spend more on decor than the guests having a good time. I yeah, wouldn't I even care. notice that. Yeah. yeah. Limited food. Uh, where they only have little bites and no, like, actual dinner. Christian, we were at a wedding and they ran out of food. No, I mean, ran 
out. Did they, was it like more guests than they figured or they poorly planned the dinner? I think whoever was plate, serving right? was over serving oh. portion wise. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they oh, oh, had oh. to wait and the caterer had to run back. Thank God it was a restaurant that catered. They had to run back to their restaurant and like the rest of the guests ate about 45 minutes later. What's he does? Yeah. Uh, having to wait in line for anything. There's going to be a line at the bar. There's going to be a line for the food. Yeah, I will say it is annoying, though, because if you do have a bar, especially if it's a cash bar and you only have one bartender, don't do that. The line gets super long. You're already paying for your drink. People will give up. Then they'll be in a bad mood. They couldn't have a cocktail. I, You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Too many organized dances. The electric slide, the Dougie, the Macarena, the chicken dance. The train. I've told this story, too. I watched a DJ get his ass lit up at my <laughs> friend's wedding. And I know the girl. For, I've known her forever. She is not the one to mess with. She is one of the nicest, most loving people in the world, unless you cross her. That's my sister-in-law. She'll go right for you. They specifically told the DJ, you do not play the chicken dance at our wedding. Now, they're paying you. And then they hear that. <laughs> Bro, bro decided he was going to play the chicken dance, and and uh, he she chose violence. Yeah. And uh, I watched him in the hallway getting eviscerated. And Good. I, and I was just like, I want to be like. She's a paying client. Uh, no, I agree. You paid. If yes. You, you went through that list. You planned it. This is her wedding. Right. This wasn't like house music. This yeah. was you, you, she, she sought you out and gave you instructions, yeah. and you did not follow Wrote them. you a check. Correct. Yeah. No, I I. 100- I did not blame her at all. Yeah. When I tell you, I thought that man was going to tear up. Good. Maybe he learned I, his lesson. And I was, I, I wanted to go up to my bro. I could have told you she's not the one. She's not the one to decide you're going to make an executive decision. Yeah. I'll bet, I'll bet he followed rules the rest of his DJ career. Yeah. Because I remember I walked out the hallway to go pee. And I was like, doo, 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 doo. see, and I would have been mean, but I'm more like that person that kind of like just. I, I hate to say it. I'm kind. I can be passive aggressive when I'm. Oh, upset. there was no beating. No, she. She's not That's, the girl who beats her. My the sister-in-law yeah. could have made him give her a full refund yeah. after yeah. her verbal tongue lashing. I think she hit him with a folding chair. Um, <laughs> and finally, it's like WWE. <laughs> oh my God! The top rope. <laughs> uh, and being forced to tolerate extreme conditions. Guests can get sunburned on shade-free beaches or shiver in October wind. Getting attacked by bees. I have been to the summer wedding with bees. I was stung as a flower girl in a wedding ah, by bees. Yeah. Yeah. They went up my dress. Not good. And I wigged. I was like six. Dude, I get it. I mean, the, the outdoor wedding looks great on paper. Yeah. But uh, you don't know what the weather's going to be that day. And if, if you got food around, a bunch of bees, it's not no, fun. No, I don't mind good. chewing a fly. But there's bees. Yeah, that hurts. Those some people are allergic to them. So that's the list. What do you guys at the text line have to say about things you hate about weddings as a guest? Uh, someone said assigned seating. Yeah. Oh, hate my it. goodness. Uh, chi- so awkward. Children. I have my own, but they stay home. LOL. I know it's not convenient for everyone. And the cocktail hour of waiting. I hate. There are people that do not want kids at weddings. I've been to weddings had no kids. We didn't go. We didn't go to a family member's wedding just this past year, just a few months ago in Florida, even though we're very close with them because they said no children. My even, daughter, even your age, your age kids and I, my school? kids are 50 at the time. They were 15 and 17 and they still, I understand. Like, so you we know, didn't make the trip. I got you. Text line of the people. That's what I hate at weddings. The awkward forced socialization at tables. See, so yeah, you know me. You're going to sit me at a table with a bunch of people I don't know? I'm not going to say anything. It's only happened to us a couple of times. Most of the time, we know at least a few other people there, so we get sad at their table, which is ideal. Yeah. But, and we have such a big family that if our whole family is invited, we take our own table. So it's all good. Yeah. But in the few instances that we've had to sit with other people, it is incredibly awkward. Because you're like, oh, how do you know? Do you know the bride yeah. or the groom? Okay. Right. And then you've got to start with this chit chat yeah. that just nobody wants what do you and, do it doesn't matter right. uh text message brides and bridezillas i hate at weddings and one of those <laughs> too <laughs> text message 
paying for them. I have five daughters. Money sign, money sign, money sign, money sign. Holy crap. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Yeah, that's expensive. That 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 adds up, doesn't it? Good Lord. Uh, we asked for no kids at our wedding because the caterer changes charges the same amount per plate for adults and kids. So we decided to ask for no kids. I've been, I've been to weddings where I wasn't allowed to bring a date. And that, to me, is wrong. I didn't like that. I felt, to be honest, I mean, I was I love that I was there, but I felt, I, I was mad. We, that, just, I we just had felt, that happen last summer. I wasn't mad. I just felt dumb. Does that make sense? Yes. I wasn't mad. I get it. You have rules. There's a budget. I just felt dumb. My nephew is 25 years old and was invited to a wedding uh, that we were all invited to as well. And he has a girlfriend. And they didn't just start dating. Yeah. And she was not included on the invitation. It was to the point where we had to, like, speak up and be like, if you want him there, he's bringing her. Yeah. Like I said, I understand you paper plate. I understand there's a butt. So I, I get. But again, I wasn't mad. I don't even remember. Didn't plan for that. I was. I don't even remember whose wedding it was. Be don't be a that. rude dude. Plan for it and make sure that you can accommodate things. You know what's funny, though? I, it, I, I'm remembering this right. I don't think I got that I didn't have a plus one. I think I asked someone to go and I had a date and I had to call her back and be like, I, you can't come. I, it was probably me. I probably read it oh, wrong. Oh, boy. Because the, the, the thing didn't say. Still embarrassing. Plus guess. Yeah. I was like, hey, uh, that wedding I asked you to this weekend, uh, don't worry about it. Here's the other thing it is I, I, that I wish people understood. It is not a privilege for me to come to your wedding. It's an honor for me to be there to support you. We recently had an experience where everybody was kind of treated like, you should want to be here. This is, are you kidding? You're lucky you were invited. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And no, I'm like, yeah. that's not what this should be about. This should be about celebrating your love and your union and wanting those that love you there to support you. Yeah. No, I get it. I see more texts coming in, but uh, we'll get back to them here in a little bit. Hopefully. But actually, right now, why don't we do this? <laughs> Saver Stark Restaurant Month. Hey, it's Keller from Afternoons on Q. $25 gift card to give away to Cosmos Grill in Maslin. Want to win it? 330-450-9292. Caller 10. The gift card is yours. It's Q92. Hey, folks. It's... Twenty-seven year. I'm a 27-year-old teacher. My alarms go off starting at 545. They're preset every 10 minutes until 650. That's over an hour. That's an hour and five minutes. That is an hour and five minutes. You could have been sleeping. Ah, you didn't finish your text. That's hilarious. every 10 minutes until 650 because I suck at waking up. 545 is ambitious me. 650 is homeless me. <laughs> you guys. Are She's funny. Literally wasting sleep. This is exactly how I do it. Six o'clock, six fifteen, six thirty-five, six forty-five, out of bed at seven, and I'm fifty-four years old. Guys. I understand that it might not make sense to a neurotypical brain. Is that a dig? No. Is that a smart way to call a me normal, stupid? That means normal thing. But thinker. if it makes sense to her and it helps her get up in the morning, even though it sounds stupid, it works for her. Yeah. Mind. To each their own. I mean, obviously, it works for a lot of people. Look up neurotypical. What is that? Mean? It's not a dig. I think I was called stupid by a very smart person, <laughs> which might be true. You're, I know what it means, and it wasn't. Uh, I do the same thing, only 5 o'clock hour, but I also fall right back asleep as soon as I roll over. And shut the alarm off. Neurotypical. A term that describes people with typical or average brain development and function. I told you. I'm pretty average. Uh, I do what you do with the really loud phone alarm, but it's my old phone, so I use another phone to wake up. What? Because it has the loudest alarm for me to wake up. Okay, so they're going for noise. Uh, The volume. (laughs) This is so interesting. 38 here. I'm like not daughter. I hate getting up and will sleep through an alarm. My first alarm is 6.30. It's heavy metal to make sure it wakes me up when I hit the snooze because I can't actually wake up to that ruckus. 
The next alarm is 6.45, which means definitely get out of bed. Then I have one at 7 that's telling me my kids while it plays, that is telling my kids while it plays, they have 10 minutes to get out the door. You got three different alarms. My boyfriend has eight alarms set. They go off so long that the next one starts going off before he even turns off the one before it. It's the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> Q. Q92. Well, we are going to see some sunshine through your Thursday. Problem is, it's going to feel like winter. 37 degrees for the high. Grab a warm coat. Overnight up, partly cloudy sky. Colder still, a low near 23. I am Mark J. Weather from News 5. Uh, if you swallow chewing gum, it will stay in your stomach for seven years. I was absolutely told that. Okay, so I wasn't said I wasn't told that it was staying there for seven years. But my great my great grandmother used to tell us that if we swallowed gum, our insides would stick together, and if we swallowed watermelon seeds, a watermelon would grow in our stomach. Oh, I used Christ. to think that too. Yeah, I used to think I could grow fruit <laughs> in my stomach. You, you you thought you could grow fruit in your stomach? Yeah. I mean, you're like five. Wait, wait, you don't wait, know wait. any better. Mul- multiple fruits. <laughs> yeah, well, like I never actually had one, so I guess multiple fruits. So you thought if you swallowed any type of fruit seed, that fruit would then grow, grow inside in your of stomach? Me. Yeah, yeah, I was I totally told that by my great grandma. I did, right. I did. Think that. All right, you want to hear a weird, gross one? Yeah. When I was a kid, I mean, a kid, kid. This is gonna be kind of gross. I used to think my testicles were stuffed shells. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm lie. Sorry, what? I thought they were stuffed shells that I must have eaten and dropped down there. <laughs> I can't make that up. What the heck is wrong with I don't you? know. Y'all were talking about that. The, the Oh, the growing fruit's fine, but I can't have stuffed <laughs> shells in my balls? Okay, that's the line? I didn't know. That's a, that's a fun fact I don't think I've ever said in this show before. I've said a lot. <laughs> I used to think there were stuffed shells, and I must have swallowed them, and they went down the wrong place, and... <laughs> That's where they decided to congregate. Well, I guess I got stuffed shells in my... Get a hole in your stomach, so don't they even, went there. Don't even remember eating them, but boom, they caught them both. I guess That's <laughs> where they're gonna stay. Fun facts, everyone. Uh, <laughs> that is one hundred percent true. I am in no way making that up. Um, I can't believe you sure oh, did. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much married. Got a kid. I'm good. I know. Uh, You too. Uh, 
Let me see here. Oh, quick shout out to Jake. I've been catching myself saying, K, love you, bye, when leaving social <laughs> situations. <laughs> oh, he just giggled. Did you hear his high-pitched little? Yeah. yeah. K, love you, bye. Yeah. Yeah. It, it happens every day around 9.55. It does. Got you today if you like. month through the 30th of this month and you can enjoy it with your cosmos gift card just tell everybody your favorite station making you a winner u92 congratulations enjoy the gift card brian from worcester very cool now coming up in the eight o'clock hour we're going to kick things off by talking to another grand prize winner of an awesome you're included q92 contest giving away tickets to go see fallout boy in columbus at the shot on march 29th with VIP access where you get to tour the stage, grab Fall Out Boy merch, enjoy VIP lounge and entrance, and we're throwing in a hotel stay as well. We'll be talking with the winner of that contest coming up. Looking forward to that. Also, from the 9 o'clock hour, every Thursday we talk to uh, comedians that are coming to Crackpot's Comedy Club. Now, uh, this weekend a little different because they are doing the World Series of Comedy this week. It actually started yesterday. Uh, at the club. It's going on through the 23rd. You get your tickets at crackpotscomedyclub.com. This is cool. Over 40 comedians are competing all over North America for a place in the finals in Las Vegas this September. And Crackpots and Maslin is one of the comedy clubs where the comedians are traveling to compete right here in Stark County. You can get your tickets at crackpotscomedy.com. And we're going to be talking to Joe Lowry, the founder of the World Series of Comedy, and Derek Luna, the MC of the World Series of Comedy coming up in the 9 o'clock hour. Then we'll be giving away a four-pack of tickets to the show Saturday, March 23rd at 9.15 at Crackpot. So we have all that coming up in the 8 o'clock hour and the 9 o'clock hour. This is the Q92 Morning Show, Q92. It's just for that, huh? <laughs> Uh, anyway, real quick, this is not a, this is not anything I want to dwell on. I've just been laughing at this lot on the internet. We all know Rick Flair, right? Rick Flair, woo! I yeah. say Rick Flair, woo. everyone goes woo. Yep. Jake, do we woo? Woo. Do you know you Rick go. Flair? No. Fair enough. Of course. Fair enough. Well, he has his own wigs. Now. His own wigs? Wings. Oh, wings! I was like, he has his own wings now. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, I got it. I pulled it up somewhere and I got it. Okay. You know what they're called? His his wings? Wings! Oh my gosh. They're called Woo Wings. <laughs> he said Woo Wings. Hold on. I got maybe it's not better if I turn it up without, I don't probably get distorted, but Woo Wings! It does sound like he's saying Woo Wings! Woo Wings! So, like, how do you order that? <laughs> Oh, God. I'll have 12 barbecue wings. <laughs> right. Wings. <laughs> wings. Oh, boy. They're called wings. That's all. Nothing behind that. I just wanted to play it on the air. There's even the video of him holding it. They're, they're called woo wings. Woo wings. He's on the box. Like, it's him on the box. It says woo across well, the box. Do it all together wings. now. So he would be like, woo wings. Woo wings. There you I go. Just, oh, my God. Well done, Rick Flair. Well done in Hey, it's Keller from Afternoons on Q92. Tune in weekdays from 2 until 6 p.m. and come hang out. We've got amazing prizes, fantastic music. It's going to be a good time. And uh, it's time to debunk something. A uh, TikTok trend that's been going around, we've seen a lot of videos on, uh, has been <laughs> weird that neither one of us believe at all. The uh, fact that if you eat a pretzel followed by a grape immediately after, it will somehow taste like fried chicken. I've seen many videos of this. I've seen videos of people doing it saying, nope. People, uh, people doing it saying, yes. Don't know if they're trying to trick us. 
don't know what it is, but us being the investigative reporting morning show that we are. So what we are going to do right now is we're going to put it to the test. We are uh, going to each eat a salty pretzel. I went with uh, Snyder of Hanover. And uh, these grapes are from Meyer. So the three of us now, full disclosure, you don't expect this to work. No. You don't expect this to work. No. I don't expect this to work. But like I said, we do the research. You don't have to. So uh, if everyone wants to take a couple pretzels, we're each going to do it individually real quick. And we're going to save our responses till where the three of us are done. And then we'll go over it. And we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go with two because I saw the video that you're it's supposed to go pretzel grape, not Great pretzel. We're going to say two pretzels? The guy did two. I'll do one if you want me to do one. No, I don't know. I just, I'm not... I've seen a little bit of everything. Okay. I've seen people do it twice. I've seen <laughs> people make a pretzel grape sandwich, but it's supposed yeah, but... to be pretzel then grape. Yeah, it's not supposed to be at the same So time. somehow this in your mouth is supposed to equal fried chicken. As someone who's eaten a lot of fried chicken, as a matter of fact, had a four piece from uh, Popeye's yesterday. No way. All right. I'll go first. I'll save my reaction after you two. Okay. I feel like we should be driving. Like Jake's our kid in the back seat. Are we there yet? <laughs> Shut up, kid. <laughs> no, just kidding. in Florida.
805 right here on today's hit music. It is Q92. Christian Lauren Jake producing the show and the video stream on Facebook, YouTube, and X from his home today as he is getting over a little bit of a cold. Hopefully he's feeling better as the day goes on. 330-450-9292 is a phone number. The text line, 330-269-9292. Now we had that contest going on for Fallout Boy here for the past week. To see Fallout Boy at the shot in Columbus later on this month, along with the hotel stay and uh, the VIP access as well. We talked to our winner. It's time for you guys to hear another local listener winning something. Again, our contest, not regional, no, not national. Nope. It's all local people that call us up or talk to us on our social media for these contests to become a finalist. That's right. If you can hop in your car and actually punch us on your dashboard, that's who you're up against. Yes. Actually punch us on your desk. Oh, you can put us on the radio. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? You know that thing we do to get listeners to listen? Yeah. Punch us on the dashboard. Punch us in the dial. We don't really have dials. No, no. no. Goes, dunk, that's dunk. how you punch. See? Scan. You finger punch. Scan. I remember when cars only had. So do I. Like my grandma's car, it, there was just. I that. also remember when cars had ashtrays, and I used to stick my gum in it. Ashtray. Yes, they did. Ash. Yes. And people just smoke. Oh yeah. Like Stuffed was, them in there. Yeah. Well, you're right. Well, remember those days? Yeah. And when cigarette lighters were actually. In you cars? had to hand roll your window down. I know. That's crazy. You didn't have to like, hit a button and it goes down automatically. For you. you had to like, <laughs> yeah. So you were already hot because you didn't have air conditioning. Yeah. And then you had to hurry up and crank down your window. Yeah. Who's yeah. thinking of their grandma's car right now? Because I am. I'm thinking my my grandma's car. Well, my sister adopted my grandmother's white Dodge Aries with powder blue interior for her first car. So we had all of those things in her car. I don't know what car my grandma had, but it was an old lady blue car. And it had the literally just the dial. There was no digital. I mean, it was like the, the red like yeah. line that like skirt down. You had to like turn the dial to get yeah. it to move up You'd, and like, down. Get it to get the station in correctly and get, yeah. get enough of it. I got, ah, that's so crazy. And now we're like plug your phone in. Yeah. That's, stream. That's so crazy. Because you can stream us at q92radio.com. As you well. can. You can. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube. All right. Fallout Boy winner. Let's hook up another local listener on this radio station right now. Check this out. Hello. This is Brianne from Strasburg, Ohio. Yes. Hi. It's, it is. It's yes. Christian and Lauren. How are you doing? Awesome. How are you? Very good. Obviously, you're excited. You should be because we're calling you with some great news. You're our Fallout Boy winner. Woo! It's awesome. Yay. Congratulations, Brianne. You're headed to Columbus on Friday, March 29th. So next weekend, you got big plans. You're going to be rocking it VIP style with that VIP access uh, where you're going to oh be in gosh. the lounge and the entrance. Uh, plus, we're throwing in an overnight hotel stay. So you do not have to come back the next day. You can relax and enjoy your evening, Brianne. Tell everybody your favorite station that hooked you up. Q92. Congratulations, Brianne from Strasburg. Our lo local winner of the Fall Out Boy contest. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the merch. Enjoy touring the stage. Enjoy the hotel stay after the show. It's fantastic. Speaking of Fall Out Boy, the Saint is seen as Q92. had like a list of things you don't realize you do that annoy your neighbors. And I was going through a list. It's pretty standard. It's a lot of things that I think we've all experienced neighbors doing or we've even maybe done ourselves. Right. For sure. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like mowing your lawn late at night or early in the morning. Um, not taking, letting your dogs go in the neighbor's yard and poop. You know what I mean? Not yes. taking care of that or not cleaning up the poop. Yeah. Um, things like letting your kids play in the street all day. Um, going overboard for holidays. That's my all yard. Day. Mind your business. Uh, <laughs> uh, tree debris or grass debris, you know, not, you know, putting the grass clippings out in the street or letting your leaves go into your neighbor's yard or raking them in your neighbor's yard. Things like that. Yeah. Parking issues. People who park on the street and other people don't like it or not allowed to do it, but they do it anyway. Basic stuff. And it got me thinking like, doesn't mean you don't like your neighbor. Right. But what is something your neighbor does that annoys you? Or you don't like, you wish they didn't do. Again, that's necessary. You might hate your neighbors. I get it. But you might not hate them at all. But they do this one thing. You're like, yeah, I really wish you guys didn't do <laughs> Like, my, like, Like mine is just because I'm an introvert. Yeah. I wish they wouldn't be outside when I pull in to talk to me. <laughs> that's funny. When I pull in, I just want to go in my house. Oh, I and know. It has nothing to do. I, they're lovely. I have great neighbors on both sides. I know that, but you're similar here. Like, don't talk but, to me. I just want to leave. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. I, I just want to go. I want to get in my. I just pulled in. I just got home. I want to just. And I'm going to get the mail, and I said, like, oh, I'll pull in. You, they'll laugh because we'll pull in, and you'll hear. I'll go, oh, if one of them's outside, I'm like, are your windows ever down? Here we go. No, I'm not like that rude. And I have great neighbors on both sides. Awesome. It has nothing to do with them as person. It has to do with me being a weirdo and not wanting to associate with humans. Yeah, I don't mind that. We have awesome neighbors on our one side. Like, we're very good friends with them. Our kids babysit, house sit. We just got done fish sitting yesterday for them. Um, they're amazing. We could not ask for better neighbors. You could. Everybody else, like... They're fine. Like we don't, we're not, we don't talk to all of our neighbors all of the time. But if we see them, it's like hello, hello, you know. Yeah. Um. There's one neighbor though in particular, and it's not even anything that they do that gets on my nerves. I'm perplexed by it. Both he and his wife have to pull into the garage backwards. They have they have a truck to back it. Dodge Ram. Oh my God! I think he does. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> it's a truck, but I don't know what make it it's is. I'm F1, gonna look today. Either an F one fifty or Dodge Ram. They but... are so nice, but I cannot figure out why we have to make it a point to back in. It perplexes me. It has for years. I don't know. We'll see. Great doctor, love. Fun thing. He's from Canfield. Mm -hmm. Married a Jackson girl. Get out of town. We were, we were making small talk at the front desk, and he was saying, and I was like, you got yourself a Jackson girl? Good for He's like, you. He's like, you know about Jackson? I go, do I know about Jackson? <laughs> got you a polar bear wife, huh? Uh, yeah, Real nice go. girl. Pretty. He, well done. Yeah. Well done. Well, you're a doctor, so I mean. <laughs> right. I mean, you kind of put that there. This is Olga. No. It increases your yeah. audience selection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, the, the more higher on the tax bracket, the more likely you are to attract yeah, you know, the opposite sex. Yeah, Either probably. way, I like I said, I I root for Jamie every day. I'm like three, two promotions, maybe one more promotion away from being a stay at home dad. She better slow her roll. I'm telling you, she just got this one. But I I mean, I'm like, come on, come on. I will gladly take that damn kid to school every day. Gladly put on. I, it's a dream. I put listen, on Sports Center and I and, hear and what you're do, saying. Do laundry while I'm listening to sports talk. Mop the floors. That ha It'll be Danny Tanner Central when you come to my I, house. You know what? I hear what you're saying, and I think it's a wonderful dream. However, I will caution you because I have a friend whose husband did that. Got very burnt out very quick. He was very kids? lonely. Three. So we had to get three kids up every day, three kids to school. Yes, and they, they did it on up. the heels of having their third child. Like, they had had the other oh, two. Oh, my God, so we had a newborn. Uh, ish when she went back to work, she took extra time off. So I think she like when she went back to work, the well, the youngest was around five months. You you can't leave a five month old. I can't leave a seventh month old unattended forever. Well, I you understand that, but they're also not mobile either. So you can still do what you need to do and have them there in their bouncer or their swing or so close. I'm getting it's crazy. He's so close. Yeah, I think I think he'll be crawling back. Is there. he doing the rock? Where's like I want to go? No, he scoots. I want to go. I don't and, know how. And he can turn himself around 360. Like yeah. he can totally turn himself around, but he still just can't 
And I and I just I know when he figures it out, he's gone. Oh, yeah, I won't be long. He's just gone. Yep. And, it'll be and usually to... once they become mobile, they don't want to be held very often. Well, I like holding them. So you're tough luck. <laughs> I like holding my kids. That's I knew that. That's why I brought that up. I was just trying to prepare you for the fact that once they're mobile, they're like, let me down. Love it. Love it. Love it. I did get yelled at a few times for uh, being too loud during the Bears game last night. Well, if he was asleep, everybody wanted to sleep. At one point, she was like, do it again. It's like, watch it in the living room. <laughs> it's like, wow. Well. Oh. Markets 8.15, a chilly 22 with partly cloudy skies. And Find a rewarding career close to home at Kimball. You'll find outstanding benefits, a supportive team, and opportunities for career growth. Working for a local family company really makes a difference. Apply today. Well, we are going to see some sunshine through your Thursday. Problem is, it's going to feel like winter. 37 degrees for the high. Grab a warm coat. Overnight, up partly cloudy sky. Colder still, a low near 23. I am Mark J. Weather from News 5. Listen, yeah, you got any tips for that? That one's a really tough one. That's a <laughs> you're in a pickle. You're in a pickle. I've already helped you survive a helicopter crash, oh my. a car crash, and I've helped you survive an elevator crash. A parachute, I mean, it might be time to accept your fate. What I would do? You if, really don't listen, have it. Okay. What I would do, and this is not going to be easy, depending on where you jumped out of the airplane. I would look for trees. Okay. I would try to, I would do research on what you can do to, like, make yourself go, like, a little bit like the Rocketeer, like, go across. Chest in the air, arms back. You know what I mean? Look for a tree, and now you're going to have to time it perfect, and you're probably going to get a splinter. (laughs) You think? You're going to want to. you're going to get a tree branch up your rear end. You're going to be a human skewer. Hey, it'll still stop you. So you're going to want to grab onto the tree as you hit it. You've got to (laughs) grab onto it, all right, in hopes that that stops your momentum. And if you grab it correctly, you'll... 8.19 8.19 right here on today's hit music, Q92. Christian Lauren here with you. Hope you guys are having a, a good Thursday morning. 330-450-9292 is a phone number. The text line, 330-269-9292. And, of course, thank you for having us on the radio, streaming us at Q92radio.com. And if you are watching on Facebook, YouTube, and X, 
thank you as well. We appreciate any way you guys are checking out the show here this morning. Ten minutes away from a look at sports. Hi, and also big thank you to Kimball. Recycling and disposal done right. They are the sponsor of the uh, live video stream in the eight o'clock hour. So shout out to Kimball. Appreciate you guys. We've got Kimball Trash Man that checks in with us every morning. There are. It's been really interesting to watch lately on social media, especially on the TikTok. While you still can, uh, but also Twitter, everything. Uh, the amount of people uh, going at J Lo. And mainly over this documentary, which I have not yeah. seen. So I'm not going to pretend to comment on something I've never watched. I've never seen it either. But, uh, and that clip that keeps going viral is the one of her, like, working out or something. And she, what, takes off her extensions or a wig? Something, yeah. And she's like, when I do this, it reminds me of when I was that 16-year-old girl in the Bronx running up and down the street, chasing green. And I don't know why, but that struck everybody the wrong way people yeah. calling her out for like quit acting like you're still living in the bronx you've been rich and a celebrity for like 30 years i know i, but I guess i, on, I get it but i kind of don't get the anger at her i don't either because and i'm look, not the biggest j-lo fan neither am i but i don't get but here's the thing though we all as adults as grown adults have certain things from our childhood that we're still holding on to well, I never got the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier. Exactly. You're still holding on to that. In my 40s. Right. And I don't, it's it's said in jest. It's not all jest. What, okay. What but I'm talking about even things like no, I know bigger saying. than that. There are certain things from our childhood that even as adults, we recall and probably some things that maybe we don't look back too fondly on. I can't imagine what it would be like because she did legitimately grow up in a poor area in a very rough neighborhood. That sticks with you. I don't care how rich she is. I don't care what her life looks like right long. now. Been, yeah. That does not mean she's not entitled to some childhood trauma from her upbringing. I'm sorry. Well, and then there's this. This is just, I actually saw this whole TikTok. This is the audio from it. I wish they would have posted the whole thing on our prep site because it was more interesting because this girl claims to have gone to the same high school as J-Lo when J-Lo was there. This was... One of the clips that our prep site posted of someone calling her out. I'm a Puerto Rican woman from the Bronx who went to the same high school as you, and you're lying. We're not running up and down the block. Not all of us do that for kicks. You're stupid. She went Yikes. on more about, like, you know, what, what people that grew up there didn't do what you say. Like, they're not, it's not like that. We know people. She was calling out other girls. She was calling out the school they went to, this lady. So it seems like she pretty much and knows. She was like, okay. that's the thing. Like people that even know her from back in the day are starting to like. Okay. So if that's the case, then okay. Shame on you, J-Lo. But I, just don't, I guess I just They don't also that. don't know her, what her household situation was like. It's just, fu it's just funny how like we come for celebrities sometimes. Oh, it, uh, it's not even celebrities. Get on your social media. We yeah. come for each other on a regular basis. Just the general public. You know, I don't this documentary, I feel like more the documentary than anything. It's like, I don't know. Were people telling her not to make it or not to release it or not to do it or something like that? Yeah, Wasn't there some... I think it was kind of frowned upon. People were like, eh, I don't like, know if you should. And she was like, I have to. I've got to. And then now here we are. I don't know. It's just weird. The flack she's getting. It's kind of throwing me off a little bit. Like, again, I'm not I'm, I'm not trying, necessarily trying to defend her. I'm, I like J-Lo. I think she's, I've never had a problem with j -Lo. I mean, she's just Jenny from the block, right? But that clip, I just keep seeing it. Everyone's stitching it, mocking it. Yeah. She's like, reminds me of being that 16 year old girl in the, in the, you know, the Bronx you know, running the streets. Everyone's like, you weren't sprinting the streets of the Bronx. You've got to be careful, too, though, because you hang your hat on a story so many times and you keep bringing it back to the table. So are you doing, like, people wonder, I think, because of just the way today's day and age is. Like, is she doing it for attention? Did she bring it back up because she wanted her new documentary to go well i don't know maybe that's why it ruffled people's feathers the way that it did yeah it's just man i can't get on tiktok and scroll and not see someone mocking that clip in particular yeah or just, I, I don't know i will say I, social media is it can be a horrible place for things like this like does she necessarily deserve all of this 
Probably not. Did she do anything to anybody? But I will no. S- no, but I will say that social media is beneficial in getting the word out. There was stuff going around yesterday on social media, more local news. Yeah, someone wanted me to talk about I was like, I'm not gonna No, do that. no, no. But yeah, I'm I don't saying know the truth. I don't it know. went so viral. Yeah. I saw it on so many yeah. platforms. And if it's true, then shame on you. But if it's not true, then it could just end somebody's right. business. Right. That's what, yeah, absolutely. Uh, someone texts, could you imagine being famous and every day you wake up, everything you do, you always have a camera in your face. That's how right. I, don't, I don't know how Taylor Swift does it. You can't, you can't have a bad day because if you do, everybody's going to know. You, yeah. It's going to be in the tabloids. It's going to be online. Yeah. Did you see that the, I believe it's Prince Harry is coming after Rupert Murdoch for his coverage of the whole Kate Middleton thing? Mm-mm. Yeah. It's about to get real juicy up in that whole situation. Okay, now. All right. I guess she's okay. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody's saying she's dead. Well, the internet. is TikTok is saying she's dead. I, okay. I can't use TikTok as my source. A guy in his pickup truck going, she's dead. Something is very amiss with the royal family. But here's my other thing. We've had this conversation off air before. You want to you want to quell all of these rumors. You want to not have them happen in the first place. Why can you not? I understand it's the monarchy and blah blah blah, but this is 2024. Why can't we just be forthcoming with information? Even if they would be like, you know what? She's okay. She's still recovering. She had to have a medical procedure. We all know that complications arose because they already bumped out the date from when she's going to make her next public appearance. They keep moving it out. Yeah. Like, give them some information. Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes I think they just—they're told not to. They're told to shut up. They're told not to comment. Well, that's because told... of the monarchy, and they're all like, yeah. private, private. Absolutely. So, who knows? But J Lo, I don't know, man. You're the flavor of the week. This, I, I don't know. Don't she, worry. Yeah. Another celebrity will screw up, or we'll just come for them. Right. Or people will still going into this deep dive about Kate Middleton, and those will be yesterday's news. <laughs> Good Lord. Snoop Dogg, Gin and Juice, Q92. What is your favorite beer? People love to talk about beer. What is your favorite beer? Someone said Reds or Miller Lite. Uh, when is drink a beer at work day? Right. Some places every day. You can hide it. Beer is disgusting. Yeah, Dos some Equis, like someone it. says Dosecchi's is their favorite. After a bed, bad day, I'd be headed to Ill Will Brewing in Columbiana for any beer they're serving. Bonus if Stokes Pizza is there. Ooh. Miller Lite. I do like Miller Lite. Yeah, Miller Lite's great. Fat Heads. Spooky Tooth is the best seasonal beer. Uh, that's what I had last weekend. It is good. I even had this uh, cinnamon sugar rim. Like, they did that for me at um, Winky Lizard. Modelo is disgusting, the text oh, line I says. love it. Love it with a little bit of lime. I love Michelob Ultra, someone says. My dad used to drink just Michelob, the original. My dad did, too. In that glass, glass with, like, bottle. the thing around the top. Yeah. That, my dad would sit outside with an ice cold, you know, I want a Michelob. Done a Michelob. Uh, that's how we'd say it. Blue Moon is someone's favorite beer. Ooh, yeah. Natty Light. Nice. Beer is nasty. That's the second person to say they don't like beer. Uh, Mick Ultra is my go-to beer. Bush Light Peach. I like all beer. <laughs> so, yeah, I get it. Corona with a slice of lime is my favorite beer. Voodoo Ranger Atomic Pumpkin is so good, someone says. Well, I'll have to try that. I haven't tried the Voodoo Ranger. I've seen it at the store. Christmas Ale Cinnamon Sugar Rim. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. But I got to wait till like, Thanksgiving to do that. Another Corona. Uh, I'm three years sober now, but Milwaukee's best ice was my beer. Congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm being sober three years. And good choice on the beast. I'm really upset that no one has mentioned the champagne of beers yet. Um, Oh, Miller High Life, huh? Yeah, I used to love High Life. How many times can you go to a bar and get that like for like a dollar when I was like in my 20s? Probably because it's not everybody's Uh, favorite beer. uh, (laughs) It's the champagne of beer. Bud Light. Uh, Oh. Lauren must have the fighting spirit. What's that mean? I don't know. Yingling. I went through a yingling phase in college. You know what? I'll go with you on yingling, but the black and tan is... That's awful. Big Fat Joint's my favorite beer. 
Okay. Beer, no matter what kind, flavor beer, they all taste like beer, exception, Bush Peach. Oh, Bush Peach is actually good. It's more wine cooler-esque. Lockport Brewing and Bolivar has strawberry ale that I love. Ooh, that sounds good. My favorite beer is all beer. I drink it all. Got one for Stella. Stella's someone's favorite mm. beer. Azima. That's wow. Wow. Voodoo Ranger is spicy, but it's good heat. Okay. Good heat. Uh, Guinness. One for Guinness? That's uh, a heavy beer, man. Yeah. Wine and Kugel. You guys are oh, all Oh, those over are the place. shandies. That's like what summer are, shandy. And... Look at this awesome palette this area has. Right? You guys are very refined. Your beer drinking. Uh, so, yeah, happy birthday to her. 60 years young. So, mm. maybe not. Maybe not. She is not 60 years old. No, I made that up. Yeah. She's nowhere near that, but she's older than me. <laughs> so, enjoy your day. Like I always say, there's no one I'd rather have ignore my texts and phone calls than my sister. <laughs> I feel awesome. like her sister just does her own thing. She's, she's just, just like, like yeah. good. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him right now. And you get older, she's like, what? I'm like, oh, gee, I don't know. I can't remember at this point. Oh, stop. I got it wasn't an emergency. Well, she's got a family and kids and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so do I. I can answer my phone or text when one of my family members calls. That's true. Or text. It's true. I'll give you that. I got You know how much you got to keep an eye on an eight-month-old? Yeah, I do. I remember that. I can still pick up my phone. Half the time he has it. Well, yeah. He lets you know. Uh, I taught him call. high five yesterday. He learned high five today. Oh, good. Yesterday. He doesn't. He, he goes. Real slow. Yeah, he goes real slow. He claps. Yeah. I love how babies do the open finger clap. Oh, yeah. Like, they don't do the clap. They're like. Yeah. He does that. He loves to clap. He loves when you see him clap. Mm -hmm. But I taught him high five yesterday. Now he's just like. Real slow. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because the third thing, I, third thing I've taught him that Jamie doesn't believe I taught him until she sees it. Okay. I'll be like, he does high five. He, he claps now. No, he doesn't. Jimmy, clap. Yeah. <gasps> Yesterday. Jimmy does high fives now. No, he doesn't. What? Why don't you believe me? <laughs> right. Please believe me. <laughs> like, yes, he does. I could see if I was like, Jimmy's driving now. I could see you'd be like, no, he doesn't. Well, I was just going to say, you should start being a little bit yeah. sarcastic and be like. Jimmy knows geometry. Right. Like, that makes sense to call me out and be like, there's no way he knows right. geometry. I think high fiving and clapping, I think. They're reasonable milestones. Reasonable. Yeah. In fact, what is he not? He's nine now. He just nine turned nine on the seventh. Yeah. Wow. This is a Q92 sports break with Christian Bigglesworth on Q92. The Cleveland Cavaliers lost to the Heat last night, 107-104. They fall to 43-26 and on the season. They're off today before they play the Timberwolves tomorrow night at 8 p.m. That game is on NBA TV. The Guardians are back in action in spring training baseball today as they'll play the Kansas City Royals at 4 p.m. The Guardians 10 and 13 in spring training. March Madness begins today at noon. Get your brackets ready and good luck to the Akron Zips. who will be taking on Creighton today at 1.30 in round one. You can watch the Zips on True TV. And finally yesterday, the Cleveland Browns signed former Bears running back Dante Foreman to a one-year contract. That's a look at sports right here on today's Hit Music, Q92. What are you doing right now exactly? You look like, um, I don't even know what. You, you have a second to pop over to Facebook, YouTube, or X. I, I, you Enjoying look myself. so weird. You look like you're getting ready to go like scuba diving, like a wetsuit. Oh, how cool would that be? Look at it, doesn't it? Like, you know how they put the hood up? Yeah, and then... it does look like a wetsuit. Oh, we're looking for the Titanic. We'll be back. That or what's that one where they, they would drop them? Oh, what is Cuba Gooding Jr. was in it? He was a... Oh. Here on today's hit music, it is Q92. Text message, uh, new conspiracy. 
Kate was problematic, so they cloned her to replace her. Just saw it on Facebook this morning. LOL. Maybe she's recovering and they want privacy while the clone. They cloned a goat, didn't they? Something like that. Did we clone a goat or a sheep or something? Yeah, I don't know. Pig? I don't know. Clone something. We'll be cloning humans. No, I think she actually is alive and that she had some sort of surgery and she is recovering. But if the royal family really uses a body double, which they have said that they do have someone that's like a lookalike, like a decoy. If that's really who it was at that farm market and stuff, like, that's so dumb. Imagine that's your job, though. I bet you get paid a lot. Like, I am paid to look like Kill somewhere, and we'll call you when we need you. Right. And when you do, we'll give you clothes, we'll whatever, and you got to go out and do it just, uh, you know. Like, act like Kate Middleton. Yeah. Just walk around somewhere. Yeah. Be seen. We'll make sure the paparazzi paparazzi can only film you from a distance. Right. Somehow with an iPhone 2. That's the stuff that cracks me up. (laughs) With an iPhone Yeah, you get like this. You see these footage, and it's like the Subruder film. I'm like, in the (laughs) world where everyone has an HD camera in their hand, how are the only people that get a video of Kate Middleton or anyone when it's like something big? Looks like they're holding like a, a flip phone from 1997. Yeah. I don't understand. Uh, ask Jake. He knows when they clone. Jake, do you have any knowledge of cloning? Oh, I think your mic, your mic is muted, buddy. Yeah, I do not know anything about you know cloning. What? It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Sorry about that. You're, you're, I think I have the buttons, right? But he's at home today, in case you're wondering. He's yeah. not here in the studio. Thought I had everything right. Oh, you know what? I think I have to hold. Answer that again, Jake. No, I do not know anything about cloning. That's nope. a no-go. You just needed yeah. me. No, we can't hear Hello? anybody. I don't know why that is. Ah, you know what I do know why it is? Yes, I do. Third time's charm. There we go. Go ahead. I do not know anything about cloning. There we go. Nothing? No knowledge Nothing. of cloning? No, not, not that I know of. I wouldn't be shocked if you had extensive knowledge of cloning. I, I really have a cool research. We'll be cloning humans. I believe that. I believe in one day we'll be able to... Are people already trying to, like, put their brains and memories on computers somehow? I don't know. How does that work? Do you think it'll be, like, multiplicity, though? Like, the copy will be dumber than their original? No, I think I think we'll be half human, half robot. What was that show? With a half human Robocop? No, <laughs> they had the little girl. Oh, you're talking about the, yeah, uh, Small Wonder. Yeah. Wow, that's, we're going back to the 80s now. Well, hey, I mean, I'm just saying they manifested that actually being a yeah. thing back then. RoboCop could be real one day. It could be. We're never going to have half human now. We're, there, people are trying to put their brains and memories and stuff on computers, which it, explain I to me think, how that works. No, I think they're trying to get computers to read brain waves for communication. They already have that. They have, they have specialized equipment for like paraplegics and quadriplegics. Where they can literally, like, think or use eye movement to move their wheelchairs to create basic functions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we've already kind of had that in the medical realm. They have smart prosthetics, like, that can help uh, based off of muscle movement, flex and bend a joint in a prosthetic. Crazy. Right? Crazy. Who knows what we'll be doing in the future? You know, I'd like to do Who that. Knows? I actually would love to look at prosthetics and stuff at Yankee Bonics. I don't know why that like blows my mind that they can do that for people. I'm so grateful they can. People have frozen their bodies. Yeah. In case they find a way to bring you back from the dead. Yeah. There are bodies frozen in like whatever chambers right now. Do they float in water? I don't know if it's like that, like Star Wars or whatever. Right. I, don't, I don't know if it's like that. I've always wondered that. These are great questions. I know. <laughs> These are hard-hitting questions. Our brains are so weird. Why there's, are we... <laughs> there's a show on Prime called Upload where they put their brain on like a memory card and they live in like a sim-like life. What the hell? Is, what? Another one. There's a same... Oh, what happened? My text line just went... There we go. Uh, yeah, there's a show on Prime. I, I know. I, I, listen, I haven't watched that yet. Never heard of that, but I'll look into it. That's interesting to me. Very interesting to me. Where we're going to go in the future with technology and uh, will we be able to live forever? Would you want to? I mean, as long as I'm not like super decrepit. I mean, they can kind of preserve or slow, way slow down the aging process. Oh, you want to play whoa, questions like, whoa. here's a question. Okay. If they invented it, all right? If they invented it, like, listen, it is done. You can see for yourself. 
we can upload your brain, your consciousness. We can put it all on a computer, and then we can put you in whatever, and you can live forever. However they can do it, you can live forever. Yeah, but if I'm if you're uploading me to a computer, am I going to have emotion? So I say they consciousness, all of it. They could find a way to like if they could find a way. Would you? You had the option. Would you, would you wait until you're like old and decrepit, or would you be like, you know what? Let's do it now in my forties. I'm still very functional. Everything's good. Yeah, but you could even push that to the fifties and try and give yourself some natural. I'm just saying. Would you? Would you be like, you know what? I'm gonna wait till in my nineties and I'm close to death to do it, or would you be like, do it now? Well, no, because how? Do, when do they clone you? At the age you are, when they clone you? Listen, I'm asking some weird ass questions. I don't have any answers. Well, I know, but that's fine. That's why. That's. I'm. I'm just saying, like, as why if, we're the show we are, because <laughs> we yeah. always have weird questions, yeah, crazy ass stuff. I'm just trying to figure out, like, if they if they invented that, like, you could live forever. Start whenever. Yeah. Are you starting when you're old? Like, I mean, truly old. Like, you know what I mean? Like old, old. Or you'd be like, no, nah, man, do it now. Someone says until the server crashes. That's true. Oh my god. Someone could hack you. That's true. Is that like getting a colder or flu Someone virus? Could hack you. I feel like we're all doing like hallucinogenics right now. We're all just you know talking. that, but that is that like your like, colder flu? Did we just drop LSD together? What is that like your colder flu? What do you mean? You just got some antivirus to get better. Like if you are a computer in the future and blah blah blah, and you get hacked, is that like having the equivalent of having a cold or a flu? And you got to take antivirus to. I think if you were a computer, I could hack you and make you do crimes, make you murder people. That's true. Make somebody you rock around, punch people in the face. Somebody said, without a brain, you can't have consciousness. I agree with that. So it would be, it could be really chaotic. We don't know that though. We don't. It's crazy to think about. And then what if we Who do knows? this and the people that are like not cloned yet realize that we're all trying to like self-destruct the world because we don't have consciousness. And then all of a sudden it becomes a battle of the humans versus the whatever. Subhumans, the yeah. cyborgs. Right. Oh my God. And then the dinosaurs come back. There's two things I believe in. I know. <laughs> and I'll say it again. Before I leave this earth, if I live a normal expected life, anything could happen. I could walk out of here today and get hit by a car. I understand that. No one's promised anything. Right. But if I live a normal human life expectancy, I believe I will see a dinosaur brought back before. We're about to bring back the mammoth. We're bringing back the mammoth right now. The woolly mammoth one. DNA and, and elephant DNA, they're bringing it back. It won't be the same. It's going to be damn close. But it won't be the same. They're bringing back the woolly mammoth. And what if something goes awry? And now that woolly mammoths start like, what if well, it's like gremlins? Have, they get wet, they multiply, and then we get attacked we, by them. We have the weaponry to take down a mammoth. Like back in the in the day, I had to like, I'm, I'm got a loincloth on. I'm throwing a pebble in it, trying to stop it. You know what I mean? I'm grabbing a stick. Like we could drop missiles on it. Like we could kill a mammoth. It's not like before the Stone Age. We're like, shoo, shoo. We can't. You know what I mean? How big are mammoths? Away oh, mammoths. Bigger. They're huge. They're bigger than elephants. Well, Around elephant size, maybe bigger. That's what I'm saying. And you think we could kill them? You don't think we could kill a mammoth with our weapons? They're probably faster than elephants. They're not bulletproof. Okay, but I'm talking about the government can't be there for every mammoth if they multiply like oh, that. So we have more weapons. What, than are you going to use your BB country? gun to scare it off? No, but you just call the cops of the military. They can blow the thing up with a missile. If it doesn't kill you first. Lord. We have the weaponry to kill mammoths. I don't know why you're acting okay. like we have no way to well, stop a mammoth. I didn't realize we had such plentiful resources to be able to kill all the mammoths Take that they multiply. I think we could. Okay. I think we could. I don't know. Like, Nothing we can do. We have no way to stop this mammoth. Let it go. Shoot it. Blow it up. No, we can't. <laughs> like, I don't understand why you think that would be hard. What, what are we going to start having military planes fly in just to take out mammoths? If they're killing people, I think we would. Okay. <laughs> why is that hard? I'm, I'm trying to figure out why that's hard <laughs> for you to believe. Some people are tripping, LOL. We're mm. on LSD this morning. Wait, no, uh, we're not. You have seen Jurassic Park, right? They thought they had the power to take down the dinosaurs, and Thank they did. Thank you. Well, now, that's a dinosaur, not a mammoth. We might not have the power we think we have to take down. Guys, I'm going to fight all of you with on this. Thank you. Someone's on my side. Yeah, You and one other person. I, I got to go into work. I can't stop listening to this conversation. I know. <laughs> hard hitting. Hard hitting. Have a good day at work, though. Think about those mammoths. Next hour, healthcare. Uh, <laughs> if they're going to spend a ton of money to recreate some mammoth, they're not going to want to kill it. 
only contain it and relocate it. I understand, but Lauren's saying, what if it goes rogue? What if? Now, that is possible. Yes. The mammoth going, screw you, I'm a mammoth. Right. I'm going to knock down. The, you think this fence is going to keep me? Exactly. I'm a bleeping mammoth. That's right. Oh, man. Someone says, come on, Jake, be the sense of reason. Jake, do you believe a mammoth could be stopped? I do. You do? <laughs> because, because, well, I, I agree on both sides. Like, I, if I'm out in the wild and a mammoth attacks me, I don't think the military is going to get there fast enough to stop no, me from getting hurt. if there was an outbreak, if, like, there was a true event, like breaking news on CNN or Fox Yeah, news, I think, I think. mammoths in New York City just tearing things up. I think we're going to respond. Yeah, so do I. So I think, you know, now would a pistol do it? No, I don't think a pistol would do it. No, you would need something. I'm Googling yeah. this. You'd probably need something a little bit, maybe a machine gun, maybe an AK. Might even need a rocket launcher, an RPG. I mean, they've got some tusks, man. Christian, I believe you need Jesus, my son. <laughs> Lauren has it as the mammoth wearing Kevlar. Hey, I'm LOL. just saying, if there were that many, have you ever seen gremlins? <laughs> I mean, if they started multiplying, I don't know that we would have the wherewithal to keep up with making sure that we could take out all these mammoths if they went rogue. That's all I'm saying. They were hardly small in well, size. They listen. were roughly the size of a modern African elephant. And oh. their shoulder their shoulder height was 11 feet. Point the gun up. Oh, yeah. And they weigh around six tons. They would squash you like an ant. Me, yes. But if we had, like, mortars? Boom. So now we're talking about destroying Boom. land and country to no, kill mammoths? You know what we do? We would use drones. Drones with missiles. Drones would drop mortars. Very precision bombing. Oh my God. Everyone does it. Uh, <laughs> we are all yeah, done Amazon. for. Yeah, Amazon, you can get it. <laughs> equip it. You're good to go. Same day delivery. Get out there. You just killed a mammoth. <laughs> Next day delivery. So if the mammoth <laughs> return and a gremlins-like event happens, and there's a bunch of mammoths. I'd like to think, as a world, with all the weaponry we have, that we could probably that would there would be casualties. You'd probably hear, my God, you know, twelve were killed by a mammoth attack in the city. Yeah, sure. I, that's what I'm saying. Uh, a fifty cal snipe to the dome would take down a mammoth. See, one sniper. Oh, one okay. sniper. Okay. Put him on the top of a building. Boom. Okay, so now we're putting weapons Boom. in people's hands, just sniping you, mammoths. Well, you call in the professionals. This is going to be anarchy. This was a terrible idea. And you took us here. Call in the ATF or, you know what I mean? The FDA, the, <laughs> the FCC. FDA. The FCC. That's the, o the Food and Drug Administration. The OPP. You pull them all in. The uh, you guys are my favorite. Never fail to make me laugh. I look forward to listening to you on my way to work. Oh, thank you. What We're, is in her coffee? We are just big idiots. No, Mammoth. what? I'm drinking LaCroix now. I'm off the coffee. Christian's mortar noise sent me. I don't even remember what I did. <laughs> I don't either. Seriously, I don't even know I made a noise. I think it was like, right. I don't know. <laughs> Could we survive a mammoth attack? There's something to think about as you go about your day at work and school today. It's Miley Cyrus Flowers on cue. I see. Uh, Jake, I sent you that. And then I'm going to uh, find out if I need glasses. You almost look like a, a teenager. And, okay, so. I just went last week and got the puff test, someone said. So you were, how old would you, did they say to get glasses? Uh, you it was at the beginning. Now? Yeah. You, it was. How do you put that on your eyeball? I don't know. I'm going to touch my eyeball all day out, long. So I'd be afraid I would miss and, like, get it stuck in the corner of my eye somewhere in my oh, body. The worst is when it gets folded and it gets stuck up here Ugh. in your eye. <laughs> You've got to, uh, like, work your eyelid to get I'm it to come you, out. Man, I'm telling you, no. I, <laughs> give, me, give me glasses. You know what is ridiculous? Give you and glasses. my husband, if I if he has to touch his eyeball, like, he, he can't. Like this, he I'd physically. Like this. I'd be like, oh, my God, like, how close are my eyes rubbing him? Yeah. You can't he physically come close to my eye. No, that's how Tony is. Yeah. Let me tell you, the one time he got pink eye from the kids when they were little, I literally had to, like, hold him down. He has like lids of steel. I had to pry his eye open to get that eye drop in there. I get that. This is Christian in my glasses. If you're watching the live stream, this is Christian wearing my glasses like a month ago. Remember uh, that when I wore my glasses to work, you're like, let me I, let me see it. Yeah. Because you knew at that time that it might be ne necessary. I got my eyes done yesterday, and yes, they do the glaucoma test. I was diagnosed with glaucoma at 23 at 23. 
Wow, that sucks. I'm sorry. See, it doesn't look bad, guys. What happens if they need to dilate your eyes? And I'm driving on instinct. Oh, that is the worst. They didn't, the first time they did no, they that would to have me. Told me. I'm sure they would have said, hey, have someone drive you down. Well, they gave me sunglasses. They're like, you'll be fine. Just be careful with your speed because it's hard to focus up close. They were not kidding. I could have been done, doing 85 the whole way. I, would, I couldn't see the dashboard. I couldn't good. see the dashboard. I can mine, see the road. Mine hasn't puffered me the last three exams. Well, you're so lucky because I hate that stupid test. I, a, they have to laugh at the expressions on people's faces because I jump every time. I want to be like. I just remember him showing me the x-ray of my eyeball. And I was like, holy cow. Because yeah. I hadn't been to an eye doctor in ever. Yeah. Uh, until like last year when I got on Jamie's. In uh, ever. I just it never went. How long was it before I went to a dentist? Till like two years, a year ago. That's true. Now I'm like, a, they love me now. Last time I went, he was what, like. What, the dentist? Oh, yeah. Last time I went, he's like, I'm really surprised like how good your mouth is now compared to when you came in. Well, that's because you're on their wall of fame. Of course they love you. They're like, you're like their biggest walking testimony. I was. I was. <laughs> it was like. They're like, Christian's here. It was like digging out fossils from granite. <laughs> Look, a tooth. All right, next up, keep your cell phone face down during that first date. We understand <laughs> men don't carry purses, and having to sit down uh, with a hockey puck-sized phone in your pocket is a bit uncomfortable. If it's possible, keep the offending piece of technology out of sight altogether, but if you need to plop it on the table, silence it and put it face down. Even if you're fascinated by her, a light blinking out of the corner of your eye alerting you of an incoming message is distracting. And girls notice when your eyes are bobbling back and forth between your phone and them. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, the other reason I would tell you to do that, and I have before when I've been texting friends that I know are on first dates, is just because if you don't have, like, if you have the preview on your screen, I wouldn't want your date to see anything that I was sending. Because <laughs> we've sent things before, like, is he a total dog? Like, is he super ugly? Is he super is nice? He super like, ugly. Like, like, for blind dates, like, I've done it to my sister. You know what I mean? Like, we'll just send, like, are you alive? Like, did they kill you? <laughs> are you in the woods yet? Right. That would be my reasoning for being like, remember to put your phone face down on the table. So, are you for putting the phone down? Cell phone yeah, down? I think that's All a good right. idea. I think that's just <laughs> all the way around. For whichever reason you're stating. Someone text, don't open the door, because if you aren't willing to do it every time, you're setting an unrealistic expectation. That's right. And, you know, <laughs> that goes for where you take them on dates, too, because we all know that when that honeymoon period's over, there's some things you're not going to be willing to do again. Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, don't be ridiculous. Yeah. You can buy your own games at Dave & Buster's. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> no. uh, I agree, Lauren. The hand on the small of the back is a great way to show you care. Yes. Uh, keep the phone in the pocket. Girls think face down is means you're hiding something, someone says on the text. Oh, well, maybe. Oh. Could that be? <laughs> uh, next up, keep the question ratio one to one. If she asks you where you're from, answer. And then accept that as an opportunity to reciprocate with a question as well. Yeah, but just don't be like, where are you from? <laughs> what's, your favorite, what's your favorite place to go to dinner? What's yours? I live in Canton. Where do you live? <laughs> oh, my God. You live in Canton, too? <laughs> we both live in Canton. Come up with your own material, your own questions. So keep the question ratio one to one. It says, uh, don't order just a salad or sake bomb. Taking care of yourself and being healthier is great, but loosen the dietary strings just a little for the case. You don't need to eat a bloody steak from a cow you strangled. <laughs> <laughs> With your bare hands, uh, but turning your nose up at everything remotely unhealthy, then getting a garden salad makes you seem a little square. I agree, but why a salad and a sake bomb? I think it's just 
like just a playoff. Random, or... Yeah, they're just picking a random. I was gonna say that thing. I mean, I'm I was... just saying like, don't order like I'll I would order wa- that. I'll have w- water and a salad, no dressing, please. Like Carbs, am I right, honey? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because now she doesn't want to order anything. Because here you are, right, Captain America over here. I think it's safe to go with like a sandwich and fries, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Burger and fries with the guys. Something super cash. Uh, it says here, three drinks and you're cut off. Oh, I agree with that. You might have to alter this to reflect your level of tolerance towards alcohol, but if no you matter can't handle three drinks. how many beers you can crush on your head during the weekdays, cap your date drinks off at around three. Even if the date is going so well, you've started picking potential wedding destinations. If you get blasted and fall on your face, she's probably going to walk out or have a bad impression. That's true. So, three drinks. Uh, do not talk at all about your exes on your first date. Mm, it depends if she if she starts the conversation. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on that. I mean, I wouldn't lead off the conversation with it. I'm glad we met for dinner. You know, my ex is a bitch. Right. <laughs> what can we? What do you like on the menu? I, I don't know how that. What goes. are you ordering? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, they have a special on prime rib. <laughs> So anyway, I, I get that. That part doesn't make any sense. Makes no sense. Uh, it says here, tip very well. You want to tip very well. Again, just make sure that you're not trying to impress her because just you should always tip well. It shouldn't be to impress her. Let's put it that way. And finally, don't get slimy, grabby hands on the date. Oh, gosh, no. That's no. So. I, I got to tell you, for, for uh, men's health, men's fitness, I mean, no, they didn't do too it's bad. a pretty good list. Yeah. I feel like if you followed most of these, I think you'd have a good shot on a first date. Maybe. So there you go. Uh, Lauren and I always try to help you guys. today's hit music it is q92 again coming up on the nine o'clock hour in the nine o'clock hour the world series of comedy right now is a crackpots comedy club going on now through the 23rd very cool over 40 comedians are competing all over north america for a place in the finals in las vegas in september and crackpots and maslin is one of the comedy clubs the comedians are traveling to compete at you can get your tickets crackpotscomedy.com and coming up next hour, Joe Lowry, he's the founder of the World Series of Comedy, and Derek Luna, the MC for the World Series of Comedy, going to be here in studio with us for a few minutes to talk about this event, how cool it is, and uh, what you can check out and enjoy this week. As a matter of fact, also next hour, giving away a four-pack of tickets to Saturday's show on the 23rd at 9.15 at Crackpots. So we'll let you go there, enjoy a great night of comedy. So that's all coming up in the 9 o'clock hour. It's 8.58. It's... Katy Perry with Kanye. It's E.T. on Q92. Again, nine dating deal breakers that really aren't. They shouldn't be. He's considerably older or younger than you. Yeah, I'm okay. That should not be a huge I mean, unless we're talking like 16 and 36, then I, you know. But if it's over 18, Okay. I mean, I might be like, ooh, that's weird. Like, I don't know. I'm six years older than my fiance. I'm five years younger than Tony. He has a cousin. I don't remember the exact ages. I want to say she was like 32 and he was 51 when they got married. Like, it was a big. Yeah. And now he's like in his 60s and she's only in her 40s. I just keep thinking, like... You know what, those 60s isn't what it was. It's not, but I keep thinking things change. And I'm still, like, young and primal, and then things change. <laughs> you think you're still young and primal? Yeah. In I your 40s? Think, yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, in certain departments. I'm not saying, like, I'm... 
I'm not talking appearance wise. I'm not talking anything like that. But I yeah. still feel good no, and we're want. in that part of life where we still feel like we're young and awesome right. and hip, but we're not. Right. And I acknowledge that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I had a full circle moment with my daughter last night. Her Vita bracelets. She was like, my niece has them on. And she's like, I love those bracelets. I'm like, Marin, I have like seven of them. Yeah. You do? I'm like, yeah, because they were popular like a while ago. I just don't wear them anymore. So she, of course, wants them, which is fine. But like, you have those moments where you're like, gosh, I'm old. I'm not, I'm no longer cool. My no. kids do not look at me like I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they never did. Yeah. Not you, everyone. Uh, number two. Okay. I said not you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Myself included. Do you think my not daughter thinks, oh, man, Chris is awesome? I think she does. Yeah. Uh, number two. <laughs> number two. And I support this one. He's balding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's not a good reason. Some that's guys a can deal. rock what? the crap out of a bald you know what, head. I'm going to stick up for, for people. Listen, we all have. Now, do some people take it too far? They want perfection. Okay. We all have things and styles that we like or don't like. I don't think that makes you a bad person if you're not attracted to someone who's bald. Yeah, I mean, it's just personal preference. That's I, what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't look. If someone's like, man, sorry, man, I don't like guys with big heads. Now, do you ever want to hear? That? Of course, you want to hear that, right? But just because I'm bald means you have to. I don't know. I just, I don't see that as a big deal, right? We all have there's there's hairstyles we like on guys or girls. There's tats, no tats, beards, saying, like, no beards. Oh, they, oh, you don't like how I look? Screw you! Right? I, I like you. That's just not my style. I don't know. Right? You know what I'm trying to say, and I'm probably not saying it right. No, I get it. I totally get it. I only okay. Not into bald guys. Okay, you can get a wig. You can go get a hair transplant. No, 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 no. no we no, talked no. about how bad those transplants are. Yeah. My God. Uh, number three, he lives far away from you. Uh, I think that maybe should be a little bit. Uh, Depending I on think, how far. I think it really depends on the people. I mean, if you guys are very social people or you're very needy people, you need to be together a lot. Long distance is not going to work well for you. Right. But if you have confidence and faith in your partner and you guys have to be a while, be away from each other for a while and make that commitment to see each other talk every day, I think you can make it work. I think it really depends on the person. Jake and I, you had uh, you had left to do your meeting yesterday, and Jake and I, not on air, but we were talking, we were talking about this story uh, about people being contacted. How many people believe they've been contacted by dead relatives? Jake, what was the percentage in this survey? Fifty three percent. Fifty three percent of people in this survey. That's high. Say that they believe they've been contacted by a dead relative, and we were talking off air. I said, I have had dreams since my dad but listen i have not nothing crazy has happened since my dad died i'd love to tell you he showed up in a beam of light and was yeah. talking to me about sports no uh obviously they say when you see a cardinal and that's kind of my thing I, of course I, same i got a tattoo of a cardinal on my yep. arm for my dad and yep things like that i don't believe and i'm not a non-believer so i'm not sitting here going poo pooing on everybody's i'm not a oh no way but I don't believe I've ever truly been contacted right. by a dead relative. But according to that, 53% believe they have been. To me, if I, I take that, and maybe I'm wrong. I take that as like they had a message. They were telling you something. Like, they what were, is it? Is it like, like I've had dreams with my dad in them? Yeah. But they were just normal ass dreams that he just happened to be in. There was no like sun yeah. on the fifth day of March. A hurricane. Like, there was no, like, <laughs> warning. You know what I mean? Well, I was going to say, what is defined as contact? So, is it like um, there's a needle in the bottom of that can and you don't know it? And, like, it get, it goes flying off the counter. Like, it just moves. Like, is that considered contact? Like, when, when you think someone from... I'm just saying. Like, I'm trying to come up with an example. Where are we going? <laughs> Like you're, you're literally, you're literally Would you like poop this, yourself. This, this is you. This, this is you. So there's been a nuclear attack. What? what? <laughs> like what kind of scenario is that? To me, like contact like is like moving in a room. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's like more ghostly haunting. I'm talking. Okay, but define contact is what I'm saying. What does that mean? Does, does that mean that you little... hear something in your head and you're and you feel it in your gut and Jake, you feel like not to put you on the spot, Jake, but in that little paragraph, does it give any kind of context of like what exactly? their defining contact um it might not because that's only like a summary 
It just has common forms of communicating with those on the other side, including dreams, sensing a loved one's presence. Women, and then she also say that women are more likely to be contacted. Oh, is it, oh, look at that. Okay, it's because they're saying that we're so you're more, more likely to be contacted by a dead relative than it's Jake we're, and I. That's because we're nice. We're nicer. That, yeah, well, is that what it is? No. We're more sensitive, I think. I think a lot of it has to do with emotion. So think about it. Like, for me as a woman, I don't have dreams very often. <laughs> except for closer to my cycle when I know my hormones are higher. Right. Right. So I'm more apt to have that kind of... But literally, in the past 10 years... I've had one dream about my daughter. One. One. I've I've I can count maybe on one hand how many dreams. My dad's about my dad. been gone for twenty almost twenty five years. I've had I can count on one hand the amount of dreams I've had. And it, he, it's been like cameo. Like he wasn't like a major part of the dream. He was like in the background. That's how, that's how mine was. Yeah. Whenever there was a dream of my dad, it, it, there was no like son, I have to talk to you about. He was just kind of there. What would you do? Would you follow his advice if you had a dream and he was like, son? Well, depends on what he said. Don't go to work tomorrow. Would you stay home? Would you call off? I'm like, no, but are you going to pay my bills? Like, what are you, <laughs> you going to do? But pop? what if he's trying to help you out? Dad, like, you got any money up there in heaven? What do, what do we got here? I remember after my my grandma passed away, she lived right next to us, and her phone her phone rang, and I answered it. They were like, is, oh, I bet is, you that was jarring. Is, is Mary in there?" And I said, "Nope." <laughs> and they said, "You know when she'll be back?" I said, "Nope." And they go, "Well, do you know where I could find her?" And I said, "Yes, yeah. Resurrection Cemetery." <laughs> and the guy's like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry." I was like, "Not your problem. You didn't know." I was like, "You didn't know." I wasn't mad. I just was like, "I don't know." What Resurrection Cemetery is where you can find her. I am so sorry. Really God, bad. That Fergie song was really good, by the way. I mean, not like one of the goats of all time, but she had a good run. She did. I miss her. She a had bit. a really good run. Yeah. Everything turned for her when she was doing those cartwheels on the Today Show while singing. She was going, ah, 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 ah. remember that? No. You seen that video? No. She was doing a performance on the Today Show. I forget what song she was singing, and she was doing cartwheels. And as she was doing it, she was singing. But it was like, because well, she was doing she cartwheels. Was doing cartwheels. And every time I see the video, I'm just like, what were you doing? I... Who was like, you know what this performance needs? It's cartwheels. Just, she's not still married to Josh Dumont. No, they got a divorce, but they have kids together. They do. And she that's why she quit music was to raise her kids. Oh, is it? Yeah. I got to say, nothing like that's around me. I'm trying to think of the worst thing ever happened to me in a hotel. I don't think I have a worst thing, but I did have a room I stayed in that had bullet holes in it in Albany, New York. Are you serious? Yep. Oh, man, Wanna skin begging right here on today's hit music. It's Q92. It's 9.09. Good morning, everybody. Christian, Lauren, Jake here. In the 9 o'clock hour, I hope you guys are having a great start to your day. 330-450-9292 is the phone number of the text. 330-269-9292. Coming up here in about 10 minutes, we're going to be talking to about the World Series of Comedy. Coming to Crackpots Comedy Club in Mass. I've been talking about this 
last couple days. How cool is this? Over 40 comedians are competing all over North America for a place in the finals in Las Vegas in September. And our own Crackpots Comedy Club in Maslin is one of the comedy clubs where the comedians will travel and compete. Started uh, yesterday. It's going on through the 23rd. And tickets are on sale if you want to attend this. Crackpotscomedy.com. Coming up here, like I said, in about a little less than 10 minutes, uh, we are going to have Joe Lowry, the founder of the World Series of Comedy, and Derek Luna, the MC of the World Series of Comedy. They're going to be here in studio talking about this event, how cool it is, how it came to be, and uh, what you can expect if you're going to any of these shows. Like I say, you can go tonight, you can go Friday, you can go Saturday. And actually, after we talk to them, we're going to give away a four-pack of tickets to Saturday night show, March 23rd at 9.15 p.m. So looking forward to that. Really cool that something this big is right here in Stark County and, and Maslin and Crackpots. Yeah, they're one of 10 comedy one of 10. clubs. One of 10. Right here in our backyard, we're going to be talking about the World Series of Comedy coming up here right now. It's Victoria Monet on My Mama. It's cute. Oh my God! You just, you just, you just triggered my memory. Oh, you're welcome. Of, I don't have time right now. Oh, yeah. Do I? Come on. Dude. I got like three minutes Talk to tell this incredible story. Oh uh, well. Maybe not incredible. To everybody <laughs> else, I take that back. Possible incredible. No, I had a dream, and I'm, I am, I poop you not. I had a dream that I talked in sync into a one night only reunion. <sighs> like I had a dream. That was your dream. Literally. Yes. Last night I dreamt and I'm not making this up. You, you you said that and it just triggered my memory. That's so crazy that that happened. But I had a dream that I was in some group of hotels with NSYNC and, and Justin, the other guys there than Justin happened to be there. And I literally just got them all in a room. You're like, listen, guys. Well, I was mainly directing my comments at Justin. I feel like the other four are like ready to go. Well, yeah. I was like, look, they've had their bags packed for look. a while. And it was like, it happened that night. I was like, let's just go out there and have fun. One night, no one has to commit to anything. And they were like, all right. No Christian, one has right. to like, and they did. Wow. And they did. Look how much influence you have in your dreams. I just sold it to Justin. Like, listen, not even worry about a tour, no press. Let's just go out here. I don't know if we were Coachella. I don't know where we were. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Summer, they you know did I mean? it. Lilith Fair, I don't know where we were. Right. But I was, I said, I was like, let's just forget. There's nothing above tonight. Right. But let's just go out there and have a good time. There's no reason we can't have one show. And they were like, yeah, boo, boo, boo. And that's how they talk. And uh, and then they went out there and they Your did dream. it. Yeah. Probably a terrible story, but I told it anyway. <laughs> I got I NSYNC have... back together in my dream. I wish I had good dreams like that. I don't have very many dreams. Was it listening to NSYNC yesterday? Wasn't talking about NSYNC yesterday? didn't watch a show like nothing would have put that in my head isn't that weird sometimes like why things come to you in dreams though sometimes i get it because you watch them you're watching a show listen to music i think you really care about this no. reunion more than you let on that's probably why i think i've been very open about the reunion no i know but i'm just saying like you really are holding it in there and yeah in my dream in a hotel room i talked them into getting back together good for you man We can do that. Text in your questions for Joe. What do you want to know about Jake? Yeah, let's hear him. Text him in. I'll ask Jake. He'll answer. You'll get to know him a little better. No questions too crazy. No questions too silly. Well, maybe. It depends on what you what you text in. Keep in mind, it's a radio show. If I can't read it on the air, I can't read it on the air. So don't, nothing, you know, don't be too gross now. I know the answer to this first one, but I'll ask him just so he can answer it. Does Jake have a girlfriend? Yes, I do. Her name is Star. That's a cool name. It is, and it's her legal name. That was the first thing I asked her when I met her. I was like, "Is that your legal name?" She goes, "Yeah." You're like, "That's not your real name." Well, I mean, I don't know. 
don't know. Maybe her like parents a... named her Star. Yep. Okay. Where's she from? Ashland, Ohio. Are she really? Is she there for college or no, she's she there? Lives there? How did you meet her? Bumble. Bumble. Yep. Great. You know what? Uh, yes for Bumble. Yes. 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 And see, that's why I like Bumble because the girl has to message you. Yeah. Even if you match, you can't talk to her unless she decides I want to talk to you. So you met on Bumble, you matched, she messaged you, and you guys just hit it off. Yeah, pretty much. And how long have you been together? Almost two years. Woo! That is a Bumble success story, everybody. How's about that? I it will warn you both, you are very gassy this morning. Oh, fantastic. Gonna see some sun. Twenty three. I am. Welcome to spring, everybody. Right. Fantastic. It turned spring two days ago, and it hasn't been forty degrees since. <laughs> you right? gotta love it. You gotta love it. All right, guys. Now, every Thursday, uh, we've been talking to comedians that have been coming to Crackpots Comedy Club. Been doing this for months now. Really cool. Yeah. Hooking you guys up with tickets as well. Like Lauren and I always say, man, these days and times, sometimes you just need a good night out with a couple beers, listening to some comedians, just laughing yeah. and just having fun for a night. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Love the relationship we've built here with Crackpots Comedy Club. And a really, really cool event's going on right now through the 23rd at, at Crackpots Comedy Club. As a matter of fact, we're going to give away passes to it, a four-pack. Uh, in a few minutes, but right now uh, we are talking about, of course, the World Series of Comedy that's going on right now. It's going on tonight, Friday, Saturday, and really cool comedians all over North America. They're competing at comedy clubs for a chance to go to Vegas in September, and uh, our own Crackpots Comedy Club here in Maslin, Ohio. How about that? Is yeah. one of the places comedians are traveling to to compete in this event. It's been going on for years, and uh, Pleasure to be bringing on right now on the show, uh, Joe Lowry, the founder of the World Series of Comedy, and uh, Derek Luna, the MC, one of the MCs of the World Series of Comedy. Uh, Joe and Derek, thanks for coming down to talk about this awesome thing that's going on in Maslin. Oh, uh, we're uh, we're excited to be here. It's, this is going to be great. You uh, you just gave all the information. I got nothing to say. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm just, just going to stand here. I got nothing. There's there's plenty to talk about, Joe. Uh, you are the founder of yeah, the I World came, Series I, yeah, I of came Comedy. Up with it. So well, 15 let's, let, years ago, let's talk about that. 15 years ago. How, how did you come up with this and how did you implement? You know, a lot of times we get these ideas of things we want to build in our head, but you actually you did it. And it is an yeah. event now that's going all over the country. So talk, talk about the, the beginnings of it. Uh, it's crazy. I've been doing comedy for 30 years. I just love comedy. I love helping comics. I love trying to make, make them grow. And about 15 years ago, I had my own show in Vegas and uh, my host was like, we should, you know, I told him about this idea and he's like we got to do it uh ju i just got a hold of every club that i had worked for over the years and asked them if they'd give me work and i ended up getting 37 weeks of work for the wow. winter wow. 
I asked the hotel to give me a bunch of hotel rooms so I could bring out industry. And it really, it just, it's just taken off. And, uh, we get about 500 comics a year that register for the festival. Wow. Myself and everybody on my staff watches all the videos. We pick the top 40. Uh, that's a lot of work, huh, Derek? Yes. <laughs> Derek, as Derek's head goes, like, oh, my God. Yeah, Derek just started with us this year, and I said, hey, you want to watch videos? And he's like, sure. And I go, uh, that's not an easy job. So, Derek, did yeah. you know all the research that was going to be going into this job? I'm currently watching a submission video. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> right he's like, he's like no. I got to get these done. Right. So, so yeah. you, you made it. It's a competition. Yeah, I, and I tell the comic. It's funny when I, I have a pre-show meeting with the comics, and I tell them all the time, I'm like, contests suck. And they're like, what? You, you run one of the large. I go, that's not why this it's it's for the networking. It's just getting to meet the other the com, the, the other comics, mm -hmm. the club owner. It's to get them in front. There's a lot of Chris is great. The crack pots is one. It's unbelievable. And he he gets raving endorsements. You off, but from I'm every telling guest. you, we've had we've had all the headliners in for, I would say, two to three months. Yeah. And without any prompting from us, without us saying anything. Almost every comic. Well, he to tells a us to say that. Oh, is that oh okay. Yeah. It's, part it's of the not contract. a problem. There it is. It's not a problem. Like I'm getting. There's. A, I actually have a belt on <laughs> that shocks me. You. Yeah, and <laughs> and I, whenever that happens, like we rehearsed it last night, and Chris is like, whenever you fill this, say <laughs> I, say I'm a good guy. No, we, and we, and I'm like, this is awkward, and he goes just, and then I'm like, Chris is a good guy. <laughs> See? So, yeah. yeah, it works. No, it's they, effective. They he, say it, and a lot of them say he just he's he is a comedy club owner the cares and, and then people have said not every comic club owner does oh it's crazy <laughs> you would think they would but uh yeah chris cares and he hires a lot of the comics that register for this festival so i mean a lot of the comics that you'll see you you guys might have on here down the road if you, they've done the world series they've gone through that process and stuff and he sees them he comes to vegas and judges for us for our main event what happens is we travel to 10 different cities this year and then we'll end up in vegas in september and about 160 comics will be out there, 20 to 30 club owners uh, and other industry, cruise ship directors. We've had uh, several, most of the comics that you see on uh, America's Got Talent have come through the World through Series. Through the World Series, okay. It, not all of them, but I mean, it happens a lot. Right, I mean, yeah. I, right. Yeah, because the one of the people who, uh, the casting directors for america's got talent she comes to the festival and watches comics and picks them out and stuff so it's pretty fun it's really cool and, and you touched on it too like this is a really great opportunity for these comics not only to perform but like you said to network and that can be huge when you're yeah. starting as a comedian as, as i'm sure you guys know well it's a lot of comics just don't even know how to do it they're just they, they don't know how to talk to them they get nervous i mean we have a meet and greet in vegas where all the it's kind of our only kind of businessy thing that we do. We put all the industry in a room mm -hmm. and, and I stand there and I have to keep walking around the comics going, go talk to them. It's, they're they're yeah. here. <laughs> and, and, and I go, but it's so comics are weird. Like you, what you guys are doing on this radio is incredible and I'm not nervous now, but I get more nervous doing this than I would be standing in front of 200. 300, 400 people. Right. Well, I mean, just because just because you are great at comedy and you can make a room full of people laugh doesn't mean that you know how to self market. Yeah, and no, and I think that's, that's got to whole... be a challenge. But I think sometimes your material because one of the best things that I love is when you can go to social media and find some reels that are just really short clips because that that speaks volumes. If you make me laugh, then I want to come see you too. You know, I mean, it's it's great exposure for these comments comics to be able to come to the World Series of Comedy to get that exposure. I mean, you're really kind of giving them a boost, um, you know, by highlighting them and, and bringing them to this. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So now the, the comics that are here in town are going to be competing here. They start, it was started yesterday. It's going on through Saturday. How, how are like the winners determined? How are you guys doing that? As far as uh, we just put all their names in a hat. It's just like, uh, we've got a dartboard and their pictures on it. Uh, we we watched all their videos, mm -hmm. and we ranked them, and then we got got a hold of them and told them, you know, hey, do you want to come to Maslin? And then uh, some said no, some said yeah, because some of them, you know, some of them already work for the club. Uh, we got forty comics coming this week. We had sixteen last night, so we watched sixteen comics last night. I judged them. Uh, Chris judged them, and uh, Jeremy uh, Jared Og Danley, who owns Bar Comedy USA, he judged them, and he was on on judging them from StreamYard, and uh, we just score them, 
pick them. The audience helps to get helps pick the winner, and then uh, whoever were the top three get to move on to the Thursday and Friday shows. And then it's less comics each night. Tonight there'll be what is it nine? Nine. Yeah, nine comics in each show, and two of them move on to Saturday, and then there'll be six on the first show on Saturday. And their time keeps increasing. So. Okay. They did five oh. minutes tonight. They do seven minutes. Gotcha. Saturday they do. Man, ten. this is a real. I mean, this is this, yeah. This is more is... intense as you go yeah, on. Then they do ten minutes, and then the final three do twenty-five minutes. Wow. And it's a chance for us to see if they can do. <laughs> One year we had a comic who had an incredible thirteen minutes, and he moved on, and then he made it to the uh, the tw- twenty-five, and but he had thirteen, <laughs> so he stretched wow. that to about seventeen, <laughs> and then he started over. Oh, it was wow. like I was laughing in the back. I'm like, oh, this is terrible. And then I go up to announce the winners, and I'm like, in third place. And he stepped forward, and I'm like, thank you. Thank you for, <laughs> thanks like, for not making me say it. Right. Like, yeah. I know what happened. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm glad you guys have like judges. I, we were joking on the on the show this week, talking about you guys coming down. Uh, before radio, I was I was I was a bar manager, and we used to battle the bands, and it was strictly audience. And I can't tell you how many drummers mothers and guitar players girlfriends yelled at me and came up to me and threatened me because <laughs> the crowd cheered louder for their boyfriend and I, then i realized and we didn't quite so when I, that's why i asked you guys like how are you judging because man battle of anything could be a little bit of a you can't trust an audience 100 th- percent. thank you that, thank you i yeah. i sign off on that because yeah. like i said you get someone's mother someone's wife someone's girlfriend damn i comedian was way better it's like oh yeah. okay so we but, still have uh people come up to us and they're you know they're mad that their comic didn't move on but you know if they did a stock joke or or, you know like the joke you hear at the water cooler or whatever like that if you do one of them you're done yeah you gotta write i'd rather see you die a terrible horrible (laughs) death on stage (laughs) than tell a stock joke work hard write, make you know come up with your own material Mm -hmm. yeah so but if you tell a stock joke on stage at a club sometimes and you do it good it could kill so the audience is like well that that was great they got a lot and it's like they don't understand the the process and what we're looking for so there's been times i i've had to go up and announce the winners knowing the audience is going to be like oh, oh, like, oh this is going to be a rough one yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this one's going to be tough so derek uh, if you could like any advice if, if you were giving the pep top to the comedians going up there getting ready to do this and, and compete like this what what, what would you kind of tell them as far as like listen when you get up there this or 100 percent have fun and i know that should you know should be obvious right but a the audience isn't going to have fun if you're not having fun mm-hmm. and as joe said that's the whole point of the thing i mean the, everybody wants to win the contest and but it's really kind of built like that to to get the audience more excited about right. it uh, the hanging out with the other comics and getting to know everybody is definitely the reason that you're there mm-hmm. so just go up and have fun and tell your jokes and and uh that would be the ultimate advice That's why you well, took the job. well yeah and, and as an well, i'm M- here as an mc yeah. too i mean I, I hate to say it but sometimes you might be in a situation where, where you gotta go save somebody you, you know what i mean we we take people off stage if they're running time which mm-hmm. is the most awkward thing you could possibly do <laughs> yeah i mean if somebody yeah. what, if, what if you were going over by 30 seconds on the radio here and some guy walked in clapping going <laughs> great yeah. job give yeah. it up for him yeah. now great. play miley cyrus damn it and, like, and if he right. doesn't if he's not doing it fast enough i'm in the back going go 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 <laughs> Everybody gets treated the same. You get so much time, and we're bringing you off. Yeah. This is, this is a really cool thing. Yes. Uh, it's awesome what you guys are doing for comics, helping comics network and, and work on their craft and, and get better. The finals in Vegas. I think it's really cool that Crackpot's here in Maslin is part of this. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, uh, if you're looking for something to do tonight, Friday, Saturday night, and you like I say, man, you just want to relax, laugh your ass off, have a few drinks, you guys got to go over to Crackpot's this weekend and, and, and check out the World Series. A comedy it's a really cool event uh congratulations both you guys on the success Thanks. of it yeah doing it and uh thank you for bringing it to maslin no problem it's great because if you uh what's great about these this week is if you don't like one comic you've got another one <laughs> and That's in right. seven minutes there's another guy <laughs> yeah. another comic so you're like oh, i don't like this one you're like seven minutes you don't have to wait a long time well, see, and i love that because you get to see yeah, like just, just keep... different styles yep. and different comics on stage yep. so yeah there were so many styles last night it was a lot yeah. of fun yeah show and the audience was incredible last night. Great. They were so into it. And uh, I'm just looking forward to the rest of the week. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Tonight, Friday night, Saturday night. As a matter of fact, uh, in a few minutes, we're going to give away a four-pack to Saturday night show at 9.15 That's at Crackpots. 
That's the finals right Ooh, there. You could be at the finals of the yeah. World Series of Comedy here at Crackpots. We're going to give that away here in a little bit. Joe Lowry, founder, Derek Luna, MC, World Series of Comedy. If you want more information, go to the World Series of Comedy.com. It's all right there. Thank you guys for stopping in today. We yeah, appreciate thanks, you both. Thank you very much. Today's hit music, Q92. I'm going to kick it off. My rage is being prescribed Ozampic <laughs> and then finding out you cannot afford Ozampic. Yeah. Ozampic. And now you can't do it anymore because it costs you $350. Yeah, that's what they kicked to the butt. That is. By the way, Jake checked with his pharmacist parents and they said that's pretty much the best deal I'm going to get. Yeah. For you people that pay less, God bless you. For people that got to pay more than they should. For medications, you shouldn't pay more than you pay for your car in medication. In one medication. Rage Room. <laughs> Jake, you got some raids today? Yeah, Rage Room. Uh, I don't understand why people walk, run, ride their bikes, ride their scooters in the middle of the street in the neighborhood when there's a sidewalk five feet from them. I also have that, Rage. Yeah. I've said the same thing. Whenever I see a sidewalk, I'm like, there's a sidewalk. Yeah. Why would you not walk on the yeah. sidewalk? Move over three feet, go on the sidewalk, and let the cars drive. Literally, I have the same rage. I just never, and I've said that before. I said, I'll say to myself in the car. Yeah. They'll be on the side of the road, and I got to, like, go around them, and I'm like, there's a sidewalk. Yeah. Like, especially, oh, you're walking. There's a sidewalk. Yeah. It's a sidewalk. Exactly. For you. Yeah. It's for you. Yeah. For your safety. Right. You're a lot less likely to get struck by a car on the sidewalk. Right. It could happen, but no, it like absolutely could happen. But I mean, it's God's will at that point, right? I mean, but it, oh, I agree. It's a good rage, yeah. Good rage. Let's see, we got the text line here. Uh, rage room when I sneeze, I sneeze about 46 times in a row, and I absolutely hate when I'm on my 10th sneeze and somebody that I'm talking to still having a conversation with me because I'm choking, I can't breathe, I'm snorting, and it's a hot mess, and they can't stop talking for 30 seconds as if I have any idea on what they're saying anyway. Ray Drew. I'm usually a two to three sneezer. I sneeze. Yeah, I definitely sneeze more than twice. Yeah, there's there's never usually just one. Yeah. It's usually a two to three, but I know people that they'll do it 10 times. I'm like, good Lord. Yeah. Good Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rage Room, when your friend has no kids, husband lives with her parents, but says she's a life coach and posts videos <laughs> of how others can improve their lives, Rage Room. Okay. That is fantastic. Listen, it's fine if you've got no kids, no husband, and you live with your parents, but to say that you can help others live their best life when you have zero experience. Listen, the only thing I would take umbrage with, good word there, is, wow. li is still living with your parents. No, if you don't have kids, you don't have to have kids to be successful. You don't have to have a husband or wife to be. Right. But I'm assuming. You do need to be independent, though, if, to speak on how to. If your age starts with a three and you're still living with <laughs> mommy, you should probably reassess a few things. Yeah. Now, unless you're ridiculously smart and have been stashing money away this entire time. Well, that would be really smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get that. But uh, I don't... how old is this friend who, no kids, no husband? If you text me 23. I mean, come on, that's fine. Yeah, but still, if you text me thirty-one. How can you be a life coach at twenty-three when you haven't had any life experience? Yeah, well, uh, touche. Yeah, touche. Jake, you'd be a good life coach. Would I? At age twenty-four. At age twenty-four, <laughs> I think you've learned a lot. You've moved out, had to move back in. You, oh, you've, yeah, he's gone you, to the school hard knocks. You have a job. You've started an own side business. You're trying to get off the ground. Yeah. You're in a long distance relationship that includes trust, travel. What's your mantra? I don't. He doesn't know what that means. Okay. What's your um? What's your slogan, Jake, for life? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just ride the wave. That's my slogan for life. Ride the wave. Yeah, ride the wave. Yeah, just ride the wave. With, on your electric surfboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remembered. I remembered. It came as a foam kickboard. Uh, it came as a foam <laughs> kickboard you ordered from China on Instagram at night for three hundred dollars. <laughs> you know what else? I had a friend. 
um, who used to, and he would admit this, he would get drunk at night and order concert tickets and then ask girls to go to the concert with him. Random girls, like he'd see at bars or online. You need online. to hook him up with my sister. He's married now. Oh, dang it. He's married My now. sister does that. She'll be like, she'll text me really late. She'll be like, which concert do you want to go to next? I'm like, stop. He How would, much have you had to drink? Because we're going to be sitting front row. He wouldn't be about a friend. He'd be like, I'm going to take a girl to this. That's oh, what he would do. It'd yeah. be for a date. Yeah. But he'd buy him drugs and he'd have tickets to like all these concerts. And he wouldn't necessarily have anyone to go with. He would tell me about it. It was frustrating to him. He's happily married now. Everything's fine. I'm glad. Hopefully he takes. But I remember shows. that. That stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but you're buying just concert tickets with you. I was like, did you ask someone? No. I'll find somebody like, to go so with you're, me. You're buying them and drunk, and then you're like, well, I'm gonna find a girl. And we're gonna go to the show. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey man. Good on you. Yeah. Uh, text message: Jake is a secret serial killer. <laughs> he is not. I assure you. No. No. Oh, he wouldn't hurt a fly. He's or literally he? no. He wouldn't. He's literally the nicest, nicest kid you'll ever. No, I can't say kid. You are the nicest man, kid that I've ever met. Sure, <laughs> I have to you're... say that because te- technically, I could be your mom. Yeah. How old are you? 24. Oh, I could easily be your mom. I would have had you when I was 18, but still, it happens. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Makes for great senior picks. Good Lord, you have a good day. Uh, yeah, I did. Our internet came back. Woo! There you go. So happy. Finally, get back on and Pornhub. We- <laughs> You're an idiot. Uh, and we got a forty dollars bill credit. So, I guess glass half full. There you go. I had a normal day. Uh, what do we do? I work, went home, had to uh, watch the kid, and then after she got off work, we had to go return. She won a uh, microwave on Mac bids, and uh, it did not work. Oh. Gotta take it back. They're very good. If you return, return their credit you the money right back, like in like instant. That's awesome. They're very good at that. Yeah. Uh, the more and more I watch her in this, I'm a little impressed with how these this place runs. Because yes, there is an absolute chance you can get something that doesn't work. Yeah. There's a reason it was returned. Right. And uh, so we brought it back, and there was no. Let's talk about no hassle. I'm like, all right, little little, scan it. All right, the money's credited to your account. Like, oh, you, you nice. don't need my card or anything? It's like, nope, your card's linked to the account. You're good. Check. There it is. Boom. Nice. They weren't like, what do you mean? It doesn't work. Right. They we're just like, okay. I don't think people do that too much anymore, but it used to be a real pain to take things back. Oh. Like, I would almost hold oh. on to broken things because I just avoided it, you know? Oh, terrible. But yeah, so I was very impressed with that. And she keeps winning things. She keeps winning auctions. Now she's obsessed with getting us a new microwave on Mac. I said, what? hey, listen. We're out. We're about to. We're going to go drop this off. We're out. Why don't we just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and we'll get one? Yeah. No. Just, she's like, no, why? I'm not paying $100 for a microwave. Why would you do that if you knew you could get it cheaper? Well, look what happened. We got one that worked. And there's another one that was there that she's bidding on. And we we took it out of the box and like plugged in to see if it worked. And it does. And now she's bidding on that one actively. There you go. You're allowed to do that, too, as long as you take the box back up and put it back together. Yeah. Oh. Plug something in and see. The only thing I don't like, I said, when I, and I know I we talked about this when I'm in there, is I it, some people like have like Phil Collins stick season right here on today's hit music Q92. It is 9 39. Uh, you know what? Why don't we why don't we give these away right now? You want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we just talked about Crackpots Comedy Club and the World Series of Comedy that's happening this weekend. Would you like to go with three of your friends to the finals? On Saturday night, 9.15 at Crackpots in Maslin and see who wins and hear the comedians that have been doing the best all weekend long. Let's go. 330-450-9292. Caller number 10 going to hook it with a four-pack of tickets to Crackpots to the World Series of Comedy. Caller 10, good luck. It's you now. tell you this one of the things that happened in vacation sunday night ocean city had a tornado and they don't get tornadoes 
It's it's much more rare. So they are like than it is here. The people in the south when they get snow, they really over overreact. Were they no, like no, that? No one cared. No one cared. No one cared. They were like, eh. No one cared on the we boardwalk. We never get them. Nothing's gonna happen. No one cared on the beach. Beyonce cared. We're on the fifth floor. We're on the fifth floor well, with, yeah. with our four month old baby. She cared. Yeah. And I went around and I found on Facebook a local. Uh, there's a Baltimore station. But they do weather for Ocean City as well. Yeah. So I found that, and I was watching one of their weather guys live. And I'm not even saying this to like, oh, man, Mark John. The difference in quality of information and and communicating between Mark Johnson and other weather people around the country, you guys do not understand how good we have. I'm not, I, I swear to you I'm not saying that out of any type of, oh, because well, he's on the show or because I just like him. This guy was so bland and so just there were like moments where like you would just his radars were on. the And I'm glad he did what he was doing. Yeah, he was absolutely helping. He was giving him. you the information. But talk about doing it on an NPR way. And mm-hmm. you don't get ready. You don't, NPR, you don't know what that means. But like as bland as you can be. Yeah. There'd be times where you just see the radars on the screen and he wouldn't talk for 10, 15, 20 seconds because he was and he was getting information. He was I'm, I'm not trying to bash him. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I get it. You realize how good he is at his job, whether he's doing severe or winter weather, when you see somewhere else in another market doing. Yeah. Because he tells you down to the street, down to what, if it's, you know, what to be afraid of, what not, what to do. And he was just like, I'm not seeing rotation. Well, when I watch the. It would just be this. <laughs> And you're looking at the screen, like, and you're like, "Oh, I guess that's hey. good." I'm like, "Anything else? I'm on the fifth floor. <laughs> Anything else? I don't think it's a tornado." I'm like, "Sir, <laughs> sir." But I'll tell you this: the boardwalk, they didn't care. Yeah, everybody stayed out. They didn't care. Everyone's like, "We don't get tornadoes." All right, we'll get a storm. We get storms. We don't get storms. And there and and no tornado. Well, fair enough. The they know. I mean, that's like it took me a long time to realize that in Ohio we don't get like, I mean, typically we don't get big tornadoes. Even if we have tornadoes, it's like an EF one, maybe an EF two. You know what I mean? Biggest one we ever had was eighty five. Xenia wasn't that a pretty big one? That might have been a pretty big one. Yeah, but eighty five and like me in the Youngstown area, that Niles one, that tornado that was. Like an F four or F five, it was on the ground for over an hour. 19- Went into Pennsylvania. Yeah, nineteen seventy four was he get killed thirty six people. Yeah, that is crazy. That was what did they? What what EF was that? I'm trying to find it, but I know that was a big, big one. Like they still talk about. Oh yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, I one thousand percent agree with you, Christian. Other weather people are awful compared to Mark Johnson. And there's bad weather. It's the only one that I tune into, so I know what the heck is going on. Great. That's why I tell you guys to follow his social media because Facebook Lives are fantastic for both winter and summer weather. Uh, Blue-eyed country girl checking in. Jake seems like a clean guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. He's turning on the mic for this one. <laughs> Sorry, what? I'll just read what it says. It says, blue-eyed country girl checking in. Jake seems like a clean guy. How did he meet Star? I met Star on Bumble. Bumble's yes. the way to go if you're a guy, I'm telling you. That's the way to go. Because the girl has to initiate any correspondence. So you know she's interested. That's real nice for you guys. She's interested at least enough to say hello. Can you ruin that immediately? Sure you can. But, I mean, at at least you know she she thought enough to at least say hello. Right. 
So I, I think Bumble's the way to go. If you're a guy and 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 you're you're looking that route, and trust me, your boy's been on Bumble. <laughs> go with Bumble. I mean, Tinder's fine. Tinder works, but I feel like Bumble's better. If you're re- if you're not to be all, but if I think if you're looking actually looking for something. Not just a little. <laughs> I gotcha. I think Bumble is the better way to go. Like Jake, if do you agree looking, or disagree? I agree. Like if you're looking for an yeah, actual I, I refuse. I was on all the dating apps, but I did refuse to get uh, Tinder. You never did. I Tinder? never. I never did Tinder. Wow. Never. Never. And you were on everything. You yep. didn't even get in there. Just out I was of on Christian. I was on Christian Mingle, but I was not on Tinder. <laughs> now, we'll get. Oh man, I hate. It's a good old boy that you can take home to mom. <laughs> That's just interesting. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but I have to keep us on time, which I already haven't done. Thanks for the signal, Jake. <laughs> well, you were asking him about his God. dating life. Get us all in trouble. Uh- Met my wife on Bumble in 2017. Jake reminds me of the I Like Turtles kid for some reason. <laughs> Good morning, random (laughs) Swifty girl here. Good morning. Hope y'all have a great day. Thank you. Good morning from dental assistant Kayla. Have a great day. You have a great day, Kayla. Jake, back to your... uh, So you were on every dating app, which we've talked about. This isn't necessarily new. I I know. I realize we're... But I'm just curious. Why why was Tinder one you were... Like, out of all of them, all... Like, why was Tinder one you're like, you know what? I'm not doing that one. I'm curious why that one was the no. Well, I think there's two real reasons. Reason one, uh, I just I knew what Tinder was. I think I was looking for something more than just a booty Tinder. Call. Yeah. Right. Um, Were you ever just looking for that? Not really. Like, uh, look at you. Something I'm in my head. So proud of like, you. Like something in my head was like, you, you know, that'd be fun, but <laughs> yeah, 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 it would. But you it'd know, be yes. fun if we could do it again. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, but, it'd be more than once. Yeah. yeah, but like, I it, it just I just wanted you know a relationship. But another reason was I had an ex that was on Tinder. Okay. And I just didn't want her to know that like, I was on there. Like, what if you matched? Yeah, like, I don't, well, I don't think she would have matched with me, but she was also on it for, like, different reasons. Like, she would swipe and, like, make fun of guys. Like, she oh. would, like, you know, even, like, when she was in a relationship, like, she would still be on it. Whoa. Not, Not to, like... Wow. Wow. <laughs> what did you just say? I think I think we were dating and she was still on it, but she wasn't like actively like looking for anybody. But she was just like no! and, like, no! and, like no! and, uh, yeah. Jake, I mean that that Jake. Do you know what color that flag is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Okay. Do you know how hard Christian's waving it right now? Okay. Yeah, I I'm aware. Don't okay. worry. That is she's still on it. I have no idea. I haven't talked to her in years. I think we should ask. I haven't talked to her. I that was that relationship lasted like maybe weeks. Could you find it was oh, that was his and star. No, 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 oh, no, no. Jesus no. Christ. No, that he was said like, it was another relationship. Yeah, I no. was like, what are we doing here? No, 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 no. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We're back. Music's back. Okay, all right. <laughs> I thought you were telling me Star's still on No, Bumble. no, 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 no. I was like, this cannot be happening. My heart almost stopped. No, if it was her, I would have been like, you need to bring her in again. I need to talk to her. This is no good. Yeah, well, no, yeah. If it, I, Rule of thumb. Uh, I think if uh, the girl or guy you're dating is still on dating apps after you've been dating, I think I think there's a problem. There is a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now sometimes you start dating someone, you're still on it. You're just you start when a couple. Well, if of it's dates. casual and you know yeah. he's kind of dating other people too, then exactly. that's fine. But when you decide, hey, let's let's see where this goes. Let's yeah. Let's then date. it's time to take the app off it's, the phone. It's for a time while. to delete the app. Yeah, yeah. Thank God, man. I thought you were saying no, oh, no, no. Uh, okay, so you just you you really weren't interested in just that. Yeah, I just yeah. He's a good I, I wasn't boy. about that. What one. kind of success rate did you have with uh, farmers only? All like all. Jokes oh no, I had I had zero zero uh, luck on any of those. Except Were there for, a lot of hot girls on that. Oh, um, not really. There was a lot of older women on on those. Amen. Yeah, favor right here on today's hit music. It is Q ninety two. Oh, it's 9.40. Now we're going to be getting out of here in a, in a few minutes. You know, it, it's funny. Uh, Keller's in here telling a story about keys. I forgot uh, yesterday. I, not daughter. Wanted to go visit her boyfriend at his car wash job. Okay. And uh, I said, you know, check with the, you know, mom. I said, is it cool? It's cool with me if it's cool with you. No big deal. 
let her go up. I said, hey, let me ask your mom. Your mom, she was working on a very big deal for the bank yesterday, like like very big, very large. She couldn't be disturbed. No baby, just just no right. dogs, no nothing. I was like, don't go in there and be like, can I go see my boyfriend? I was like, hold At on. At the car wash? Yeah. So I was like, go. Yeah. You're fine. Text me. Let me know you're there. Let me know if you go anywhere else, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I, I get a call. And uh, for whatever reason, it, it was, uh, I don't have his number saved, but the number came up and it said the name of her, her boyfriend who is or may not be emo. We don't right. know yet. Still don't know. <laughs> Jury's still out. you guys wondering, haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> and um, it's, it's him. And I'm thinking, okay, her boyfriend's calling my cell phone. Is there a problem? Well, well yeah, really? So it's her. She's like, hi. <laughs> it's like, hi. She's like, you're probably wondering why I'm calling you from boyfriend's uh, phone. I was like, thought about it. She's like, we have a little problem. I was like, okay. We, did we did we wreck? Did we? What did we do? Right. And she's like, I may have locked my keys in the car. Yeah. In my car. Yeah. Like, okay. And then I it hits me while she's upset that we got that card at an auction for her. Yeah. There's you no only spare. have one. Yeah. No one spare. set of keys. I go ah. Well, I was like, I'm thinking to myself, I gotta. What do I do? The baby. She's working. I was like, okay, I've been a little bit. Hold on. How do I figure this out? I was like, call the Boardman police. Tell not, them what I you go, did. do not call 911. Call the non emergency line. Call the non emergency line. line. Tell them, and uh, they should be able to send someone down and get you in your car. Use that little window doohickey. Yeah. So I'm like, whatever. And then I'm trying, then I'm, I hang up and I'm still thinking, I, I got to get up there. I got to get up there. It's not an Make emergency. Make sure but, she's okay. But that's right. my not daughter. I need to be up there. She's stranded. Not stranded. But... No, kind of until her car yeah. ever got unlocked. So yeah. Like, trying to figure this out. Trying to figure this out. And then uh, she texts that the Borman police were like, we don't do that. Call AAA. They refuse to come and help. Oh my gosh! And that's fine. I guess some police really? stations don't do that. Yeah, they're like, we don't do that, man. You're gonna have to call AAA or figure something out. Basically, what if there was a baby in the car? Yeah, they basically told her like, eh, they too, just too bad, so sad. The window, too bad, so sad. Like, or an animal. So I finally, at that moment, she was done with her deal. I was like, say, hey, Jimmy, I gotta. Go. Yeah. So I, I have AAA. I go up there. Once I realized that, I was like, oh, geez, kind of. Triple A is kind of a thing you almost forget you have. Right. And I've had it for three years. I've never had to use it. And I, and I called. And I got to tell you what. I only have a few minutes here. I was blown away how efficient that was. Yeah. I called the number. As soon as I called the number, I get a text on my phone from like a virtual AI agent. Yeah. I put in my information. They showed me where I was on my phone. They had the GPS of where I was. Are you here? Holy, yes. Yeah. Make a bottle of the car that's locked. Put it in. Are you, it's your car. Are you insured? Put it in. They're like, we are contacting someone now. I get like a text maybe two minutes, three minutes later. Daryl from Blank Blank Trucking will be coming to help you. Like, wow. It said like, you'll be there within, it, it was like 45 minutes. But mm -hmm. then like 10 minutes later, I get a call from Daryl. Hey, on my way. And they're like, Daryl has just called you. Then they text you, Daryl just called you. Yeah. Like, I, I'm just saying, like, I haven't used AAA and I don't think ever since I've had it. Yeah. Maybe people have, uh, my experience yesterday, that was efficient as hell. My parents swore by it. Efficient as hell. I mean, I didn't even have to talk to, like, a person. Yeah. They text me where I was at. They showed me where I was at. They text me the person's name. They text me the company, towing company they were sending. And that guy was that guy, showed up. He was in the car in, like, two minutes. And we were, I'm, I'm just, I was blown away by how good. And efficient. I'm sure some people could call it there. Well, I had a terrible with anything, but I was blown away. I expected to get a weird guy on the phone. Yeah, I don't know when I can get a guy to you. I'll call Earl and maybe we'll get someone down there. I just sit tight. We don't know. Can it I, was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Can I make can I make a recommendation though? Give it make a spare key for the car. Go to Costco's website. They have car keys express on site a few times a month. And oh, you do they? can you can get a new key and a new fob. I'm not a uh, member. You have to be a member to get into Costco. I don't. I don't think you have to actually go you, in there. They just come to area Costco's because they do it either in the parking lot or just in the breezeway. You don't actually have to go into the club. Most police departments in the text line won't do that anymore for liability reasons. I, I'm not bad. I, I I guess I get it. I was just, I was just a little surprised. It was a 16 year old girl. Right. <laughs> but I thought they'd been You're a like, little more. <laughs> like, sorry. But uh, I was like, all right, ain't no debt liability is okay. But I gotta say, AAA. If you guys don't have it, I'm not telling you to go out there and spend money, but. I was pretty impressed with how well, quick, efficient, and informative they were. Well, that's like, I mean, 
even with our safe light, like we have a, a rider. I got I to call somebody. I got a chip from a rock. That sucks, man. It's we, only like this big. We have one of the worst windshields ranked in the United States. Us and Jeep Wranglers. Forerunners and Jeep Wranglers have the most stone chips in the United States. But it is so quick and efficient. And they just come to our house and do it in the garage. Can you fix that or you have to get the whole thing replaced? Uh, it depends on how bad the stone chip is. That big? But how deep is it and how much is it spidered? No spidering. Okay, then they can probably just patch it instead of replacing the whole windshield. Are they expensive? I don't know. They always say it's... safe flight repair, safe flight replace. They don't say safe life charge this. They don't say that. Right. No. Um, <laughs> ours is through our insurance. We have a rider on our insurance and we have no deductible. Like, so it's just free windshield replacement anytime Look I get a stone chip. Look at you. I, I drive the most damaged windshield type car in the United States. I got you. I got you. I've had four windshields with this car. I've had well, the car three years. I got to get mine at least fixed. Yeah. At least fixed. All right. That's going to do it for us. We are out of here. I want you guys to have a great rest of your day. Nick's in here next. Keller after that. And Ryan at night after that as well. Because we are live on local radio station, locally owned. And we are proud of all of those things. So thanks for listening today. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Uh, Jake, thanks for doing everything from home and producing the video today. Yeah, Appreciate feel you, better. I hope better. Hopefully we see you tomorrow. Yeah, I should be in. Uh, you got a voice changer? Oh, my bad. Wait, you didn't mean to do that? No. Oops. You really didn't mean to do that? No. Go back to it. I thought you were being funny. Oh, hello. Check, check. One, two. Hey. <laughs> love it. I love well, it. Thanks a lot, Jake. We appreciate you, buddy. All right. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Have a great day. It's Justin Timberlake, Selfish on Q92.